Call to order the regular board meeting of August 6th, 2019 at 7 p.m. The Pledge of Allegiance <laughs> night will be led by the board. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk Barry, please call the roll. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. First, I'd like to say that we are trying out a new audio system tonight, these wireless microphones, so that anyone from the public who addresses at the podium, um, as well as any of the board members, in order to be heard, you need to press down on the button for a second or two. It will turn green. And then when you're, you've completed speaking, press the button again until the light goes off. So board members, as I call roll, uh, just make sure your green light is on. And then after you've spoken, turn it off, because they are very sensitive and will pick up all kind of background noise as well. Supervisor Ecovetti. Here. Treasurer LaFada. Here. Trustee Anderson. Here. Trustee Joseph. Here. Trustee Demink. Here. Clerk Barry is here. Trustee Vosberg. I would ask for an excuse for Trustee Vosberg and to refrain from calling for her name uh, during roll call votes. Okay. Motion to excuse Trustee Vosberg and exclude her name from all roll call votes. Second. Motion by Clerk Barry, support by Trustee to make all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by nay. Thank you. Uh, we do have a quorum. Item number four, presentations. 4A, a presentation by Clerk Barry to recognize supporters of the 2019 Veterans Services Day. Clerk Barry. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, I'd like to take just a few minutes to recognize some of the people who participated in our Veterans Services Day event uh, that took place on July the 18th of this year. Um, we have some photos uh, playing in a slideshow for you to take a look at while we recognize some of the individuals who were there, there that day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, call your name and once I do, if you could come up and be recognized and get your certificate, okay? Jason White from Vets Returning Home. Brianna Holmes and Elena Hoxie from the Girl Scouts of America. Bob Pottinger from the New Baltimore VFW. Bob is in here, okay. Shelly Rude from Michigan Female Support, Michigan Veteran Female Support Peer Group. Thank you very much. Hillary Dubay from Congressman Paul Mitchell's office. Roman from Vietnam Veterans of America. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Louise Mazzoni. Judy Fago from McLaren Macomb. And Lisa from Marco's Pizza. We had over 20 different organizations. Thank you. Yes.
Thank you. We had over 20 different organizations and governmental entities that participated in our event. Uh, we estimate that between three and 400 veterans and their families were served on that day. Uh, and we would like to thank everyone who participated in that event. Hopefully we'll be able to continue that event in the future. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Thank you. I'm sorry. One, one other individual who I just pointed out to me that I see is Laura Rios from Macomb County Veterans Association as well. And I'm sorry, there's another one. Uh, and our representative from Call Funeral Home as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number five, department reports. We do have one scheduled department report, and that is 5A, a department report from the facilities and operations director to discuss construction of the howitzer pad behind the municipal offices. Director Sonnenberg. Good evening. I just wanted to uh, provide a quick update on the progress. I know um, not, the bo not the last me board meeting, but the one before. Um, there were some questions about the uh, howitzer pad project for Veterans Memorial Park. So we were asked to try to just go out as an exercise and get some bids and get some feedback from some vendors, get some pricing, put some items together. So we reached out to about 15 vendors, we talked to 11, and um, in this economy, it was pretty tough to get some people out. We've had a few vendors out. We got some hit and miss pricing, and the pricing we got, I got some sheets I can share with you. I apologize, I was gonna do some slides, but there's minimal information. So the prices we got for concrete, for example, local vendor, we're in the area of $6,995. We got another price for 4,000 for concrete. Um, we got some, just some basic feedback. A lot of the vendors that we had out, the project's so small, it's just hard to get the people on site. So what we're trying to do, I know with my group is, I know one of the concerns was if we do these projects, we're gonna miss out on some of the lawn care. Well, one of my goals here is to take the guys, our guys off the mowers and get them to do more building type work. For example, our crew, makes about $30 an hour cutting grass, 30 some dollars an hour. By the time you figure in all their benefits, their take home is about 19. So I, don't, I wanna be clear on that. But the total pay package is a little over $30 an hour. Well, when you got a guy in a mower at $30 an hour, he, he's really, it's hard to justify. But you get him in the field and you start doing some of this building maintenance work, he's more valuable to us and our community. So my push is to do more of these type projects, and I know this is a new thing and it's gonna be kind of unusual at first, but this is the perfect example. Trying to get a contractor to finish some of this work up is tough, and the exercise to go through and make all these calls and follow up and meetings, it's been pretty taxing. Treasurer Lafada had a pretty good idea. He sent out an email about, um, since we are doing the parking lot project, about getting our contractor on board. We're meeting with him on Friday, and we're gonna get some pricing, and I think his pricing will be pretty good. I just know the scope that we, you had originally sent in that email, the actual scope's a little different. We want to put a rat wall around the outside and that slab will be about eight inches. So we did have a scope that we shared with our contractors. That's why the price was a little bit more than the initial estimate that you had come up with. Actually, I used eight inch. Uh, I, I went back and at eight inches, uh, if you look at Joseph P's uh, uh, quote for square foot, uh, it comes out to 1010 a square foot, which at uh, 2886 square feet in that circle, if you use pi rounded up, uh, comes out to $3,146, which isn't a bad deal because uh, they're going to be right on site. If we use our own labor, I'm sure we're going to use more than two people. Uh, we're going to have to come back and saw cut it. I don't know if we have the machinery. We're going to have to rent it. So if we can get uh, Joseph P. to do it, and they're only ab about 200 feet away pouring cement, I think it would be a benefit in a, in a cost savings in the long run. I do agree, especially in this instance when we have a contractor on board. I know in our group we do have some, once again, speaking to the staff we have here, we do got some really good guys. For example, one of our guys 
His father owns a big concrete company. He does concrete all the time. And yet we got them out cutting grass. Those are the type of kids that I'd rather be using them to do not necessarily bigger projects, but some of these small repairs and some more building maintenance. When you get a guy off a mower doing building maintenance, all of a sudden then he becomes more valuable than he is driving a mower out in the thing. And I think in um, one of my other items down further, I believe it's agenda item H, I'm gonna speak more to that. So you'll see kind of the direction we're going towards. But I think I can come back after our meeting on Friday and just try to get the concrete done and move forward with that. I'd be happy. But I know all the contractors we had out, the big portion of the work was putting the forms up and getting that site prepped. It would have been a lot more expensive than the price that we got from the contractor who's gonna do the current cement job. One, one quick comment, if I could. We, uh, on November 19th of 2008, so the end of, end of last year, this board basically directed myself and the team to begin the process to move the howitzer cannon from the community center park to behind the memorial at this facility for a number of reasons. Um, so hence, we're going down that road. That original estimate from two meetings ago to internally do that little bit of work. It not only included the concrete cir circular pad that the howitzer sits on, but the landscaping, the limestone rocks around it, the, the, li the entire limestone approach, the swales, the ditching, and all of that. So no question, um, the meeting with JP is very, very important to see if they're interested in adding that work as a change order and how those units would, would work. Some of the units, um, will be easily transferable. Um, concrete may or may not be one of them, depending on all the other uh, variables around it. The aggregate for the, the surround of this might be. Um, the landscape, the grading, the, those might have to be a little bit negotiated, but I'm extremely comfortable with that contractor. They were vetted, they're low, and they're gonna be starting that project and finishing it this fall. So there are some synerg synergies there. They're gonna have equipment, they're gonna have stone, they're gonna have seed and mulch to do the restoration. But I just don't wanna be um, too simplified in that we're only talking about the concrete pad because it's concrete, it's a swale, it's landscaping, it's all of the rocks around it, and it's the entire approach up to where that, where that cannon goes. But, I'm very encouraged that we're gonna meet with them and then uh, finish the direction that we had, which is to move that howitzer. Uh, Treasurer Lafada. Uh, the only um, thing I'd like to correct though is we're looking at uh, the inventory list and we're not taking in consideration the 160 hours that was mentioned last week. And uh, I went and looked at the fully burdened average cost of uh, one of our maintenance workers and at 3660 that's over fifty eight hundred dollars so you take the fifty eight hundred dollars because that's a that is a cost that's an internal cost and when you look at that fifty eight hundred dollars worth of labor if you can do it you know somebody can do it outside for a little bit more there's other things in the township that that are still in need of being done between now and the time the weather turns bad. Um, the other day I walked by the Meldon Bridge and the Meldon Bridge was you know, done on an emergency basis last year and it still hasn't been sealed or painted. So we start, there's, I'm, all I'm trying to say is I understand we're getting people off of lawnmowers but there's a lot of things to do in the township and there isn't a lot of time to do it. That's, yeah. And I'm, I'm just trying to make a point. There's a lot of things to do and if we can get somebody else to do some of that, it'll, t it'll take the burden off of you so we can get some of the maintenance things that you know, are, are been put aside. I, I agree with you 100%. And look, I've been here for a little over two years and that's one of the goals. You're, you're, when, when you're dealing with contractors and you have, you have on-site staff that can do more of the building maintenance and more of the facility stuff, they become more valuable. And that's the goal and that's what we're pushing towards. And like I said, later on in the agenda, we're gonna discuss just that. But I do feel like the, the task out there is a, is a minimal task. And I know from a construction management point, the, the numbers become kind of skewed. When you look at the work that was already done, it, it simplifies the, the concrete cost. So I will get a price from uh, the contractor just to see what it would cost to form up that pad and also pour it just so we can get some comparable numbers because the work that we have done, we basically set the table for the concrete. Now it becomes pretty simple. Trustee Joseph. Thank you. Um, 
I, I appreciate the entire exercise because the, the um, I think the automatic was that if we have in-house that we're at a cost savings. And, and from a financial standpoint, if you're just comparing, you know, the dollars and cents, you have a much stronger argument except when you factor in if the estimate, and it could be different, I know that you were just kind of ballparking, but if the man hours were 160 hours and you look at what it, how many hours does it take to, say, cut a ball field or something like that, you're not just talking about money, you're talking about the quality and how many you know, hours in a day are there to cut grass? Our people are not out, you know, 10 o'clock at night. If it rains, uh, if you have, you know, schedules get screwed up. So uh, taking somebody from another job, and I know that you're big on, uh, obviously, the facilities, but how long does it take to fix the, uh, the cold water in the men's restroom here? I don't think that's worked since I've been here. Uh, so if you have, you know, um, other tasks, and then you say, like, I can pull and save money by pouring the pad with in-house people, money, uh, financially, you can maybe make a stronger argument, but you look at the quality of what it is that they were hired to do, what would they be doing with those 160 hours they're no longer doing? And grass cutting, um, with all of the skills, and I've seen some of these guys, they're, they're very, very talented people. They come from you know different trades and things like that. So I like utilizing the skills but you're probably not going to get a guy to hire in to do grass cutting and then move him over to finishing cement without a request for some more money. I mean, at some point you, you're, you're, you're shifting the, the skill set of, you know, but I like the idea of, um, you know, looking to out, outsource the grass cutting and moving our people into things that have a more uh, quality uh, benefit to the residents. So I like, I like the concept and this entire discussion benefits the residents in my opinion uh, because we're no longer in a position to simply say pulling people from this job and assigning them to a special project is an automatic you know, way we'd, we should go. We're looking at you know, a strategic deployment of limited resources. And so when we factor in the man hours, they're not free uh, and there's a quality attached to them. So I like the whole process and uh, I'd like to see the project move forward. Um, clearly it's something that we talked about last year and uh, so all the extra work that you're doing I just want you to know I appreciate that and uh, look forward to your you know final summation I'm assuming next board meeting we should have all the data and we'll make a decision then so thank you I think it sounds like we're all on the same page if, if thank you efficiently as no no um, Joe no public comments on the uh, on the department reports there'll be an opportunity after um, it sounds like we're all on the same page we're still gonna move the howitzer we're still gonna grow that memorial back here um, and juggling which 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 constantly happens the um, the maintenance and the needs that our infrastructure has with in-house versus subcontractors is something that we do do and will continue to do and I appreciate you highlighting it here for, for everyone else so next board meeting we'll either see a uh, hard number for a change order or hard number for material and estimated in-house man hours to perform and finish that job thank you thank you any other updates um yeah well we did have uh, our brandenburg shoreline project we were fortunate enough to it's still on the fast track i know there's two components to that project the first component being the design and engineering which was the first grant that we got um that's going really well we're beyond 60 percent we've actually been fortunate enough to get all the major players on board in fact, we had Army Corps come out uh, just last week. We met with them. They were super excited about the project. They had minimal questions, minimal concerns. Uh, we still are, the second phase to that is the um, NOAA grant for the implementation. That's going really good as well. I mean, everything we get is positive feedback. We're hoping to hear back from that with some really good, solid news in the next couple weeks. And uh, we're still pushing to start that project if everything goes as planned um, in the, late fall, early spring would be the goal, which is unbelievable for a project of that type. Usually you could, they could be out four to five years. So we're doing really good on that end. Also on another note, we were able to remove all the fencing at the um, Veterans Memorial Park ball field. We took down the post, we laid them in the parking lot. Uh, those have all been removed. We're in the process now of picking up the post and taking them back to our lot. So that's all completed. Uh, we're making great progress, and we have made a conscious shift to be, do things a little bit different, but it takes time. You got 
a staff that's been doing things the same way for 20 years, and as we grow, we need to grow with it. And we do, I do recognize that there's, there's issues, and we are pushing for change, but I realize here that change takes time, and especially if you want it to stick, you want the guys to buy in, and they're starting to buy in, and we're starting to move the needle. It just, it's a process. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other departments wish to update the board or the public? Seeing no further updates, item number six is the consent agenda. All items under the consent agenda are considered routine by the board and will be enacted in one motion. There's no separate discussion of these items. If discussion of any item is required by a board member, it will be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. Public comments on the consent agenda are permitted. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve the consent agenda as stated. Motion by Clerk Barry. Support. Support by Trustee Joseph. Discussion. Comments from the public. Motion by Clerk Barry, support by Trustee Joseph to approve the consent agenda. Clerk Barry, please call the roll. Clerk Barry, aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Demink. Aye. Treasurer LaFada. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. Aye. Motion passes. Item number seven is a public hearing. We do have a public hearing tonight to conduct a public hearing for the proposed El Rey Maintenance Special Assessment District to consider objections, objections to the petition for the improvement and the creation of the special assessment district. So we moved. Have a motion to open the public hearing by Trustee Demink. Support. Support by Trustee Joseph. Clerk Barry, please call the roll. Trustee Demink. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Treasurer LaFada. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. Aye. Clerk Barry, aye. Public hearing is open at 722 p.m. This is a public hearing. If anyone would like to discuss the El Rey Special Assessment District, now is the time. Seeing no comments. Oh, if, if you'd like to, no, you, you, you don't have to, but if you'd like to voice your concerns for or against. Oh, okay. There's, there's items after this as well that aren't under the public hearing where you'll have an opportunity to speak when the action items come. Okay. Seeing no public comments, do I have a motion to motion close? Motion to close the public hearing. Motion by Trustee Domingue. Support. Support. Support by Clerk Barry to close the public hearing. Clerk Barry, please call the roll. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Clerk Barry, aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Treasurer LaFada. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. Aye. The public hearing is closed at 7.23 p.m. Item number eight is the regular agenda, 8A. And there's going to be two or three items here related to this issue. Adopt a resolution 2019-22, number three, for the El Rey Road Maintenance Special Assessment, Special Assessment District, which confirms the sufficiency of the petitions, approves the estimate of costs, and is the final determination to proceed with the Special Assessment District. So moved. Motion by Trustee Domingue. Support. Support by Trustee Anderson. Discussion. Comments from the public. Now would be, now would be a time if you would like, but you do, you, if anyone does want to comment, make sure you come up to the podium, state your name for the record, and we do have our team, Special Assessment team here, in our engineer, Mitch O'Connor, assessor, Mr. Babb as well. Hello. Hi, my name is Linda Palmer and I live at 26795 Alray. Um, we used to have our road graded and all for nothing, I guess, back 25 years ago, but since uh, probably the last 10 years, we don't. So we've been paying to have it graded ourselves, but we found out that they're, with this road agreement, they would take care of our road and put some gravel on it and maintain it for a certain price. So everyone on the, well, the majority on the road agreed. So we'd just like to know when it's going to get started, and we're happy with it. Thank you. I'll bring up, uh, I'll bring up the team who's on the construction side of it to uh, answer that question for you. Okay. This process is the first step in that, though, creating the district, and then we'll, we can talk about scheduling after this process goes on. And it is a long process that requires multiple resolutions because we're actually going to be taxing the property owners to grade this private road. Um, so that's why this process is here. Director Connington. 
Yes, I would. Okay, for, for her information, it's, it's early enough in the year that we can absolutely get the limestone in for this year and at least get uh, two or three of the gratings in before, before winter sets in. So we can absolutely get the material going and getting, get it started for you. And a couple gratings this year. Thank you. Any further comments on item number 8A? Just uh, one quick comment. Uh, I see a lot of people are kind of wondering what a special assessment d district is and what we're actually doing. It gets kind of confusing even for those who have signed up to incur additional taxes. But a special assessment district, uh, there are a number of them in the township. And it is um, basically in your case and in all the other cases, a group of property owners that get together and believe that a particular project would enhance their lives. And so they agree to allow uh, the taxes to be uh, assessed and the uh, township plays the role of collector and in this case the product that is being provided to you and you and the affected individuals on uh, Alray is a road maintenance agreement for a three-year period and it involves quarterly grading uh, that is spelled out the number of tons of uh, gravel that will be applied to your road annually uh, it'll be done quarterly and it is a cost of uh, $2,520 estimated per year. Uh, in your case and in all other cases, residents get together and through a petition process agree that the enhanced benefit to that particular district is approved and then it comes before the board and we have public hearings and allow those who are not in favor or in favor to make comments uh, and then postings and it appears several times uh, before the board so that we are not uh, taxing people uh, unfairly. Uh, taxes are a big deal and they should be taken seriously with lots of opportunity for people to weigh in. So uh, I know in your case you're excited to have um, you know a passable road and I understand that but uh, be patient as we go through our process to make sure that you're uh, not being taxed inappropriately. Thank you. One, one more thing to add on is this is a private road. So uh, public roads you, you deal with the Macomb County Road Commission for the funding source to grade gravel and the issues that they have here. And because this is a private road, we as a township can't invest in somebody's private property. You have to invest in it yourselves because in, uh, the multiple people in the district have come to us to coordinate this process. End of the day, the property owners have a, a road that is collectively paid for by those private property owners. And this one is, uh, doesn't seem to be very controversial because there's no against here anyway that spoke up. Any further comments? Motion by Trustee Demink, support by Trustee Anderson. Clerk Barry, please call the roll. Trustee Demink. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. Aye. Clerk Barry. Aye. Motion passes. There's a couple more, or one more on LRA as well. So item 8B, adopt resolution 2019-23, number four, to establish a time for, for, hearing, for a hearing on any objections to the roll, setting a second public hearing for the September 3rd, 2019 meeting at 7 p.m. for the LRA Road Maintenance Special Assessment District. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Clerk Barry. Support. Support by Trustee DeMank. Discussion. Mr. Supervisor, I would just like to point out that in the affidavit that is in your packet, um, the date that uh, I certified that the notices went into the receptacle is not in this particular uh, affidavit, uh, but it was done on the 23rd of July, and that is in the affidavit that is on file and on record in our office. Thank you for clarifying that for the record. Any comments? On the motion. Motion by Clerk Barry, support by Trustee Domingue. Clerk Barry, please call the roll. Clerk Barry, aye. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. Aye. Motion passes. We do have another public hearing on this on September 3rd. Thank you. <laughs> Item 8C, approve a request by the Finance and Human Resources Department to have Gabriel Roder Smith and Company perform the following actuarial services. 12-31-18 actuarial funding valuation at a cost of $10,500. 12-31-2018 uh, 
2019 Gasby statements 74 and 75 at a cost of $6,000. 2000 or uh, December 31st, 2020 Gasby 74 and 75 at a cost of $6,000 and $2,500 for PA202 uniform assumption calculation expenditures. Do I have a motion? Move to approve. Motion by Trustee or Treasurer Lafada. Support. Support by Trustee Joseph. Director Bauer. <coughs> Hi there. That, actually, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, these are required uh, things. Um, from Gasby, we picked Gabriel Roder Smith because they are uh, hired to perform, hired by MERS to perform the actuarial services for our pension plan. So we get a synergy with doing our OPEB along with our pension that's already done with MERS. And I guess any, I don't know if anyone has any questions. Any questions from the board? Uh, we are required to go out and get an actuarial assessment um, for our specific needs as highlighted in this agenda item, correct? That's correct. And uh, what are our obligations to follow the actuary's uh, findings? So if a recommendation is made that we fund OPEB at a certain amount, um, what, what, what's our uh, you know, obligation to follow those recommendations? So OPEB is different than our pension, where pension you are required to fund. OPEB you are required to report. So regardless of our funding level, we, these reports will be used to um, update our audit and everything else like that. In the past, up to date, we have followed what our actuarial has said. So during our budget process, we'll bring out um, the reports. You'll got, you guys will be able to see what was required or was recommended. Recommended, thank yeah. you. Recommended to fund. And like I said in the past, the boards have always um, funded upon recommendation. Thank you. Any further comments from the board? Clerk Barry. Thank you. Were any other uh, firms consulted or uh, quotes gotten from them, or, di or w did we just go with this one because of the reasons you stated? We went with this one because of the reasons I stated. Okay. So there were no other firms that were consulted on this particular project? We did not go out for bid. On, well, it's below the bid threshold. We did not go out for quotes with this. We had talked about it at the Human Resource Department and Finance, and the synergy of them already performing half of our work, already having all of our data, and just being known as... Um, the premium company or the gold standard of, of performing actuarial work. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments from the public? Motion by Treasurer Lafada, <coughs> support by Trustee Joseph. Clickberry, please call the roll. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Wait, Anderson. Wait, hold on a second. Aye. My green button wasn't on. Aye. <laughs> Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Demink. Aye. Supervisor Ecovetti. Aye. Clerk Barry. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Item 8D, a, approve a request from the Planning and Zoning Department to amend the planning consultant contract with Giffels Webster to include two reviews in the initial yeah. application fee. Do I have a motion? So moved. So, support. Motion by Trustee Domingue, support by Trustee Joseph, Director Palin. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, I have Rod Arroyo from Giffels Webster here as well to answer any questions. Um, the reason for this request is that the planning department has recently changed our process where we now uh, do a, get a review back on applications and give that back to the applicant and give them an opportunity to amend their site plans. Whereas in the past it would go directly to planning commission. With this case, it gives them an opportunity to amend their plans, get a revised review, so the applicant and the planning commission can have a current review on their project ultimately does make it. So we're asking for a slight increase in the review fees on the contract that is less than the second review fee that was included in the original contract. Thank you. Any comments on the board? Mr. Supervisor, if I may. This, uh, this issue uh, was discussed at length um, in our planning QBS team as well as the planning department and the um, overwhelming majority of the plans submitted tend to lend themselves to a second review. Um, and the feedback that you get sometimes is that when you're coming in for a second review and the first one is covered and the second one isn't, there's a feeling that the uh, bureaucracy, the uh, entity, the vendor is maybe incentivized to find a reason to you know, get us to a second review, which is really unfair and not, not true. Our, uh, especially my experience with our new uh, planning consultant, every effort is made to help 
solve problems, but there's a transaction, you know, so you do the first review and then you provide feedback with a whole list of, you know, proposed solutions to, to the problems. And um, that is the number of the percentage of cases that require a second review is considerably high. So to give a bulk sort of purchase and just include in the process a second review um, leaves this whole, um, well, you, you're just finding problems so that you can tag me again on a, it, it takes that argument right off the table and it puts us in more of a, um, uh, a working relationship instead of a feeling of uh, adversarialness or, you know, you're going to find something to pick me apart and then charge me again to fix it. How convenient. This is a nice solution and it's a rate that is really considerably below what two reviews would cost. And it just uh, looks at the total number and really it's a procedural and a systemic change. Uh, it was a great idea and it's uh, time has come. So I really do uh, support this and uh, to my fellow board members, it's something that the uh, planning team took um, you know, s significant consideration in, in bringing this recommendation forward. So I wholeheartedly support it. Any further comments from the board? Comments from the public? Motion by Trustee Domingue, support by Trustee Joseph. Clerk Berry, please call the roll. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Treasurer LaFada. Aye. Supervisor Ecovetti. Aye. Clerk Berry, aye. Motion passes. Might as well hang tight there. You got a couple items. Uh, 8E, approve a request from the Planning and Zoning Department to have Giffels Webster update the township sign ordinance at a cost of $3,500 from General Ledger 101 through 373804. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Trustee Joseph. Support. Support by Trustee Domingue. Comments from the board or, or an overview from John? Thank you. Uh, you know, this item as well, as Trustee Joseph stated, we did meet to talk about all of our items in front of you tonight with the QBS team. Uh, the sign ordinance one is one that we've needed for a while now. Um, there's been some, there's been a Supreme Court case that uh, needs some addressing in our ordinance as well as just some best practices, you know, locally um, and just ease of use of the ordinance. So we are asking um, Giffels Webster to do the amendment for that. Um, and this item as well as the next two, we are asking for the board to include the budget amendment in that. So I just wanted to put that out there now. So that is included. Um, that's, I have any, if you have any questions regarding the sign ordinance, myself or Mr. Roy, I can answer them. Do, can we amend the motion to include the dollar amount for the budget amendment to uh, the maker of the motion, Tristan Joseph? I'm sorry, could you repeat the request? The this this one I don't believe actually required that budget amendment so all of these there's a budget amendment that would need to be done to add money into the planning and zoning individual department each of these has it this one did not get read with that in there I see so the um, the amended motion would uh, just include the um, appropriate budget amendment uh, to satisfy the cost so I would ask for continued support same thing continued support uh, Mr. Supervisor, just a quick question on the motion itself. Um, the, um, the signed ordinance, as Mr. Palin's laid out, has created a lot of problems um, given the requirements to be content neutral. And it's created a lot of ambivalence and a lot of uh, requests for variances and a lot of uh, threats of lawsuits. And so this is, this is like long overdue. Um, I'm very um, hopeful but not... Um, convinced that a $3,500 review is going to free us from all the entanglements of, you know, sign problems. And uh, for that reason, I'm hoping, and I know as a, just as a matter of uh, best practice, we have to get Mr. Seabird involved in this and at least, uh, you know, let him see as we're making our way through. Um, this issue not only comes up, obviously, in Chesterfield, but in a number of communities that um, Mr. Siebert represents. So I'd really like to have his input at some point, and I know that's normally the practice, but just to be clear on the record, uh, when we're approving it, this is a very, very difficult one, and uh, signs get real, real, real tricky. So um, time long, long overdue, and uh, thanks for taking it on, Mr. Arroyo. This is a real fun project for you. Thank you. Any further comments from the board? Clerk Barry. Thank you. Uh, I know that uh, we've been talking about this for the better part of 
two, three years now uh, since the um, decision came down. And this is something that we needed to address. Um, and I'm glad that we are. I'm a little concerned that they're the right people to be doing that. Um, I know that um, Trustee Joseph alluded to it as well, that um, I've had multiple conversations with Mr. Siebert uh, about this, and he acknowledged as well that it, it's, it's a tricky one, and it's one that we've got multiple places in the code other than just the sign ordinance where this is going to apply, where it's going to affect. So um, I'm kind of curious for the what this vendor is going to be doing. Are they going to be reviewing all of our code and making all the recommendations for changes throughout it, or are they strictly staying with what's under the zoning or planning um, parts of the ordinance or parts of the code? Um, and will they be working with um, our legal uh, counsel here at the township, or are they going to be seeking another legal counsel that they use? I'm kind of curious on who's going to be handing the legal on this because ordinances um, are, in fact, um, legal implements. And so um, given the fact they're not lawyers, I'm kind of curious where the legal expertise is going to come in on this. Yeah, uh, this one just for the sign ordinance is, the sign ordinance is a specific chapter. Um, and I, I don't want to speak for Mr. Arroyo, but I, I do believe that um, Giffels Webster and Mr. Arroyo have done this in several communities. There's been a big push since the Supreme Court decision. Um, and I believe their firm has done several and maybe even worked with Mr. Siebert's office in the past on some of these, but um, that we would work in unison with our legal team. Um, I'm sure Mr. Arroyo can speak more to other communities, other communities that they've done this in and as far as the legal review goes and who they work with. And Good evening. Um, yes, uh, we have been involved in drafting numerous uh, sign ordinance amendments over the last three years. Um, I would say it's fairly extensive. And our general approach is that uh, because we draft zoning ordinances and sign ordinances, I think as planners we bring um, a lot of benefit in terms of organization, presentation, graphics, underlying principles that are used in that code. It's also imperative that you have legal review of any zoning ordinance. So our typical process in our municipalities is that we draft it and then your legal counsel would then be um, reviewing that on behalf of making sure it's in proper form, making sure it meets all specific legal requirements. So that's our typical process and um, that's what we are proposing here, that we would draft that ordinance. Um, we would forward it on to Mr. Siebert's office for his comments. Uh, after you're satisfied with the nuts and bolts of the, of the approach to it, uh, and then it would come forward through the normal adoption process. Question. Trustee Joseph. Um, I just wanted to um, pick up on your question, Clerk Barry, and uh, share with the board. As the liaison to the Planning Commission, I, I, if I could, it's directly applicable uh, to, to the clerk's question, Mr. Supervisor, and that is the relationship between our planner planning consultant and our attorney. Um, we have had, in my experience on the, on the planning commission, areas where I don't think it went very smooth. Uh, there was uh, a real, in my opinion, oversteer and, and overreach where the, where the planning department was well into the lane of the legal department. And um, what I'm most impressed with so far uh, with Giffels Webster and Mr. Arroyo in particular is uh, some of the more contentious uh, hearings that we've had where a petitioner is uh, very strongly in, in, uh, of the opinion that he is uh, you know, in, a, in a permitted use situation and calls upon different uh, variances that were granted to other petitioners and it gets quite heated and Mr. Arroyo's uh, response back is just a very dispassionate, uh, look this is what the ordinance says and this is what this body can do based on this ordinance. The next step would really be a review by the attorney to say whether or not the ordinance is constitutional, whether or not it, 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 it can carry legal water, if you will. And so uh, I think we're best as a township when both of those entities operate within their lane. And uh, in the formation or in the correction uh, that we have uh, with a Supreme Court case coming down and talking about signed content and net neutrality, all these other things, it is prudent to have the planner um, do sort of the construction and then a review so that our attorney can determine whether or not it's consistent with 
the uh, order from the Supreme Court. So uh, it's, a great, uh, it's a great balance. And in the case that I was referencing, Mr. Arroyo, uh, you know, it doesn't surprise you that uh, petitioner who was going to sue everybody, uh, you know, makes his way to our township attorney. And the process in place, I think, is spectacular. And it's a real testament to the uh, ability of two separate entities of government, our legal and our planner, working together. It's the spirit of Clerk Berry's question, and I'm very, very comfortable in this area for the process you've laid out. Clerk Berry. Approximately how much time do you estimate it's going to take you? How many hours are you going to need to spend on this particular ordinance? Um, generally, I would say it's probably in the neighborhood of 30 to 40 hours, somewhere in that Vicinity. We're going to be reevaluating it. We're going to be reorganizing it. We're going to be adding graphics and making it easier for people to understand. So it's a fairly um, robust undertaking. I mean, we're trying to stay within reasonable confines. We know you have a lot of township ex uh, expenses, and we're, we just want to make sure you're covering what you need to do. But um, that's that's our estimate. So we can anticipate having the ordinance completed approximately, in your estimation, if it were approved by the board tonight. How about how um, long are we looking at? I would say uh, from the time we start to the time we have a draft ready for review is probably in the neighborhood of two to three months. Okay, and the reason why I'm asking that question, and it's my follow-up question is going to be if that can be expedited, because we are uh, at the tail end of a two-year project of recodifying our ordinances mm -hmm. and our code, mm -hmm. and um, we were really hoping to have that completed um, you know, no later than you know November, uh, certainly year's end. So my question is, you know, what I'd like to do is, if the board decides to proceed with this from the clerk's perspective, um, is to have this new ordinance uh, once approved submitted to our recodification team mm -hmm. so that that can be implemented and integrated with the uh, new code um, as soon as possible. So that's a concern yeah. of mine. So just okay. moving forward. Right. Well, would that be possible to expedite if necessary? We will do everything we can to expedite. Absolutely knowing that, yes, we'll do everything we can. Thank you very much. Any further comments from the board? Any discussion from the public? Looks like we, oh, welcome. Make sure the button's pressed. Are we at this point in this thing oh, here? Oh, I guess. Well, it's we're really at $89,000. Just got to talk into it now. Go ahead. Speak, speak into the microphone, Mr. Miller. Okay. Show me. We're on this one. Is that are we up here? Mm hmm We don't have. Oh, nope. No. Mr. Miller, address the board and speak into the microphone if you can. Okay. When I Thank you. Thanks, sir. Five pages up this afternoon. And I saw about a million and nine hundred thousand dollars on it. When that that item's going to be a little later I, down the agenda. No, we're not there yet. It, yeah, it's going to be down the agenda. Now, over here we're eighty nine thousand bucks. Not there yet either. We're not we're there. at the three we're at the three thousand five hundred dollar one. We came down here tonight. If you're going to throw them, throw contracts around for a million bucks, I'm going to remind everybody that I want to find out who they are. I'll make sure that from. I'll make sure that you can speak for the. Fire, fire station remodel contract down the road. Is there any other public comment? I don't want you going to Jackson. <laughs> Former Treasurer Hartman. Hi, Amanda Hartman. Um, I just want, is this a special, this $3,500, is this for this ordinance only, or is every time you make an ordinance change, is this company going to charge $3,500? Okay. okay. Let me, let me, I'm at the chime in here. <laughs> uh, it's been a priority to update and amend at one point. Um, I, when I walked in the door, I was asking for an ordinance amendment a month because I felt like our ordinances, whether they're um, sidewalks, our processes and procedures for doing everything were very dated and um, they actually were and still are so we've updated a ton of these um, right out of the box the sign ordinance comes came to mind 
and after years, Trustee Joseph and I had many conversations a couple years ago on this, and the complications of what what's going to the board and the sizes, and you add a Supreme Court ruling where you can't regulate content, and then and then you add um, the roadside billboards and all the other risks that we have as a township. This is one, and we've done dozens that needed counsel, um, needed needed assistance. Every one of our ordinances that get drafted, a lot of them get done in-house in direct concert with our attorney. Everyone gets reviewed by the attorney. This is a specific ordinance dealing with signs, and we now have a service consultant in Giffels Webster on the team who we have hired to do this special project just for this ordinance. If another major ordinance is necessary, I can't guarantee that one may or may not come up that requires an outside consultant outside of our attorney we will be bringing that back as well but all of the other ordinances only go through legal and through the departments and that will continue unless other experts are necessary thank you you answered my question you're welcome any further comments from the public on item 8e Motion by Trustee Joseph, support by Trustee Domingue to approve a request from the Planning and Zoning Department to have Giffels Webster update the Township Sign Ordinance at a cost of $3,500 from General Ledger 101-373-804. And there was an amendment to add the appropriate budget amendment as well. Clerk Berry, please call the roll. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Supervisor Akavetti. Aye. Clerk Barry, aye. Motion passes. Item 8F, approve a request from the Planning and Zoning Department to move the township's current zoning ordinance into the clear zoning format at a cost of $42,250 and a $7,500 annual GIS, GIS hosting fee for the interactive map from GL account number 101-373-804 750 not 7,500 uh, we'll start over at, let me let me start all over at the yeah 750 annual fee approve a request from the planning and zoning department to move the township's current zoning ordinance into the clear zoning format at a cost of forty two thousand two hundred fifty dollars and an annual seven hundred and fifty dollar GIS hosting fee for the interactive map from GL account number 101-373-804 with a budget amount, a budget amendment in the amount of the purchase. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Trustee. Button was on. So moved, by Mr. Trustee Mr. Joseph. Support by Supervisor Ecovetti. Discussion, Director Payne. Thank you. I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Arroyo to uh, tell you guys about the product, and I believe he's also going to do a live demo for you tonight. So I will turn it over to him, and I'm also going to have Mr. Arroyo do the following item as well. Mr. Arroyo, we got that projector with a uh, free, like, coal furnace, so it takes a, takes a minute to warm up. It's a, it's a fairly outdated right. model. Okay. Uh, here we go. I see it coming to life. Perfect. All right. Jonathan, kill these ones, too, please. Thanks. Okay. Well, once again, good evening. I have a, just a brief PowerPoint, and then I thought with this type of product, the best thing to do is demonstrate it so you can see how it works, and I want to show you an example. Um, the idea behind clear zoning, in our firm, we draft a lot of zoning ordinances. We deal with a lot of zoning ordinances, and quite frankly, most of them are pretty horrible to deal with. They're difficult to read. Nobody wants to read them. Um, a lot of people who work with them on a regular basis, the Planning Commission, um, development professionals, local business owners, uh, citizens, they don't really understand what they say because of the way they're crafted. They really um, kind of needed a wake-up call. And back in 2007, we decided there's got to be a little bit better way to present the way the code 
um, looks to the community. A lot of times, many communities have a really great zoning code. It just is difficult to working, difficult to work with. So we, what we do with clear zoning, is that we take your zoning ordinance and we totally reorganize it. We basically, take it apart and put it back together again. It's a very exhaustive process. Uh, in this particular case, we're talking about somewhere in the neighborhood of 380 to 400 hours worth of work. And what we do is we go line by line and we break down the ordinance and reorganize it into seven basic articles, and I'm gonna show you that. What we also do is we then hyperlink it so that when you're going to your website to use it, the ease of use is really amazing. If you have it in paper copy, it still works well. So the idea behind this is that when you see it online and then you go look at the paper copy, it's gonna look the same. So it, but it's gonna have a higher functionality if you use the online version. And it runs on free software at the very end. The idea behind this is that we wanna make it so that there's no cost to use it, um, that it's free for everyone to use. Um, so we maintain the regulatory effect of your, of your zoning code. Um, the end result becomes that user-friendly document. We think it improves customer service and we also consider it to be an economic development tool because if you're a local business owner or you're a developer looking to do business in your community, um, this is going to be an ordinance they're going to be able to find answers to um, much easier. Uh, and I'm going to show you through the demonstration. So we, we really consider this to be uh, a business-friendly uh, product that, that helps in, in your economic development goals. Um, currently, there are about 21, 22 communities that are using clear zoning. Um, in Michigan, we've got six in Oakland County, two in Macomb County, uh, two in St. Clair County, other counties as well. We're currently doing it um, with Bingham Farms. We've got a community in Ohio, West Virginia, Louisiana, and in Steamboat Springs, Colorado, and it's growing. Uh, the basic concept behind clear zoning is for your zoning districts to boil all the key information down to a two-page spread. So that when you look at this, on the left side, you have all the permitted uses, and on the right side, you have all the primary information that you're gonna to wanna to know, setbacks, building height, and the like. You've got graphics that illustrate how it works, and then you've got hyperlinks to find information. And I'll demonstrate this in just a second. One of the things we also include is a use matrix. Use matrix is probably one of the handiest tools because it answers the question, where can I build X use? So if I wanna know where I can build a fitness facility, I go to this table, I'll look up fitness, and then I go across and it'll tell me that it's a uh, conditional use in the CR district, it's a permitted use in the CM district, it makes it really easy to find out where uses go instead of having to thumb through potentially every single zoning district. And a lot of times our zoning ordinances tend to have graphics that look like this. They were probably hand drawn and photocopied multiple <laughs> times and they don't necessarily look as good as they could be. All your graphics will be reborn as color illustrations that are basically digital documents so they'll they're always going to look like an original they'll look like original online and then because you're printing from that original document they're going to print and look great um, every time you do it and various <laughs> graphics will be updated and this is just an example of some of the things we do so what i want to do is do a demo i'm going to pull up washington township and it's a little sluggish because of the internet connection but um, let's take a look so if we go on the Washington Township um, website, we go under zoning ordinances, and we click on that, it's gonna open up the clear zoning code. Okay, and so as we, I'm gonna get my mouse here. As we scroll through this, you're gonna find, let's give it a second to load. You're gonna find that almost every page has these three buttons at the bottom. They, one of them provides you the link to the table of contents, one provides you a how to use this ordinance page, and this is the map icon. So if I click on this map, it's gonna bring up the zoning map. And there's a link on their site to the interactive zoning map. So if I click on that, what it's gonna do is it's gonna open a GIS portal. And agree to the service. And now what you see is Washington Township's digital zoning map. So if, if I happen to be, I'm gonna back up just a little bit. 
If, if I'm a citizen, I'm a developer, whatever the case, I'm interested in a particular parcel of land. Let's say it's this one. I click on it. What I then learn is I learn what the zoning is. It's an R1B single family. I learn the parcel identification number. And then if I click clear zone it, what it does is it opens up the clear zoning ordinance, takes you right to the page of the ordinance that apply to the particular district that applies to that particular um, parcel. So here we see the R1B single family. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shift over to this one because it's gonna run a little faster. So here's our R1B. We have all the principal permitted uses, all the special land uses. And wherever you see blue text, that means it's hyperlinked. So let's say I'm interested in a, in a church. Um, I wanna bring a new church to the community. I click on that and it takes me to the page where all the standards are for, for churches and places of worship. So I automatically get that information just from one click. I go back to this page and here's all the standards. I can see what the setbacks are. There's 15 foot side setback. Um, I can see what the floor area requirements are. Under building height, it shows me this little graphic and it tells me that it's two stories not to exceed uh, 38 feet. Well, what if I have a different roof type? Well, I click on, click on this, how do I calculate height? And it takes me right to this chart that shows me how do I calculate height depending upon the type of roof. So if I have a flat roof or if I have a mansard roof or some other type of roof, it'll answer that question. Um, if I see this little book symbol next to something like lot coverage, that tells me there's a definition. So I can just go to the definition page and then I can go to the list of definitions and I can go and find lot Let's say it's lot depth, I click on that. It takes me right to the page that has the lot depth um, information. If I want to find out more about site standards, because this is all the site standards are in one section, let's say I'm concerned about clear vision at a corner. Here's my clear vision graphic. It, tells, it shows me all that information. And then if I start scrolling through some of the other provisions, you'll start to see some of the graphics that pop up. If you're, if you're interested in landscaping and you want to understand how your landscaping works, this is a really great graphic because it shows you the plan view and the section view of what's required by their ordinance. And if you go through, you'll see more. You see parking lot landscaping. So we go through wherever we can find an opportunity to make a graphic so that you can portray that text in a way where people will better understand it. Uh, we try to add that um, to, to the code. So, just in a nutshell, that's, that's how it works. I can certainly go on and on for hours on this, but I know uh, your time is important. Um, a couple of things I wanna mention. One of the things we'll also do as part of this particular um, effort is we'll do what's called a zoning audit, which we consider to be a health checkup on your zoning ordinance. So when we're done, you're gonna have a report that provides our professional overview of what we <coughs> think is working well and what might need work in your zoning ordinance. And then it'll give you a roadmap in terms of possible zoning uh, amendments that you might want to consider in the future. But you're going to get an assessment of your zoning ordinance as part of uh, the work we're doing. So that's going to be a separate report that is included in the work we're doing. Um, and just I, one other thing, I, I, it's my understanding, I, I heard that there might have been um, a little bit of confusion when we were originally hired on about clear zoning and how it works with the work that we do. I hope now you can understand that this is a separate product and there is a, the cost to it is reflected in the amount of time that goes into it. It's not only time to take the entire ordinance apart, put it back together, hyperlink it, and then um, make it so that it functions um, both in paper and in digital form, but also the time it's gonna take us to go through and do a full assessment of your zoning ordinance and give you that zoning audit. So it's, like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a robust amount of work. Um, we, like I said, we estimate it's in the 380 to 400 hours worth of work in order to complete it. We typically um, look for approximately about a three month window um, to complete the initial draft. And then that would be provided to your planning department to proof and go through and also would be provided to your, uh, to your township attorney to review. Uh, and then once everybody's satisfied, it would be set for public hearing. The Planning Commission would need to hold a public hearing and readopt this as a new zoning ordinance, replacing the previous one uh, in, in, in the reformatted um, um, component. So then it would come back to you, obviously, for final action and adoption because it is a, a, an ordinance. So uh, that is my brief presentation. Um, I'll be happy to try to answer any questions you might have. Questions from the board. Trustee Domenico. 
I think it's a great product. I remember you, when you brought this forward when we uh, had our QBS team, David was there, and uh, Paul, you were there for this too. I think it seems to be very user friendly. Um, I think it'll save a lot of time and effort when people want to learn things about where they can put what, where, and how in this township. So uh, it's a lot of money. I agree with that. But uh, I think it's a, a great piece of uh, computer software. I'm not that computer savvy, but it looks like uh, even I could figure it out. So I think it's a great idea. Thank you, Mr. Royal. Trustee Joseph. Yeah, I uh, actually had not heard that criticism. I'm glad that you raised it with regard to clear zoning sort of being available to us and uh, you know trying to not, not be misleading. This, this is a product that is available to us, but you are required to put all of your data in. You can't right. do anything with clear zoning uh, if there isn't a, uh, you know, a data in with your unique township's uh, information. A um, couple of quick things. Um, um, what, what makes sense to me during your presentation was um, for uh, developers, potential developers, residents who want to put a shed in, whatever it is, you know, you can get the information simply by pushing the screen, you know, and um, I think um, it's it's kind of uh, funny to me that um, the uh, Marcos people are here because uh, I was in getting my uh, far too regular old world pepperoni, and um, Dan, uh, the owner of Marcos, is a very entrepreneurial guy and had some interest in some property and just struck up a conversation with what could I put in there and how would I go about that, and it required several phone calls you know I got to call the planning department I'm not you know I look at it and you see uh, you know laundry mat shoe shine place you know permitted uses here there how, how much easier would it be to simply go and press the button and see what all the permitted uses are and you could search it two ways as you indicated if I want to put a uh, movie theater in I go and I just look for where does it fit within the township or if I have a parcel of land or I'm interested in a parcel of land what are my options there uh, taking it back to Jonathan and just talking with our planning people, the amount of calls that you get every day, uh, and then uh, unfortunately we have developers who will go forward with a project and incur a lot of cost, architectural design and all these things, only to find out very deep in the process that what they're proposing is never going to fit in that parcel. And so that's terribly frustrating and uh, it encumbers our legal team with, you know, so uh, while we're uh, adding the clear zoning to our, to our uh, township, you also get to look at each one of the uh, affected ordinances and uh, zones and make a decision about whether or not this is something the township board should take a look at because we got some very antiquated things out there that are really causing us a lot of problems on a number of levels uh legal not to be the the the, the most overlooked the um the other thing that i think it's important to point out to any resident uh who's wondering why the township is going to spend forty-two thousand potentially on this is uh, something that Mr. Arroyo left out. He's uh, come to know him as a fairly humble guy. And during the QBS process, as we were interviewing uh, potential planners, Giffels Webster kind of stood out primarily because of clear zoning. And going back and doing a little research, I discovered that Mr. Arroyo uh, had his own firm. And clear zoning is his product. It is his invention, and he is the clear zoning Jedi. And everywhere he went, um, Giffels Webster was smart enough to recognize that they really didn't want to compete with that product. They wanted that in their portfolio. So they brought Mr. Arroyo into their team. And so um, it really, when you saw the comparisons of the other uh, planning consultants, um, one after the other basically acknowledged, yeah, we're, 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 we're not able to really compete with clear zoning. We have some other things that we'd like you to take a look at, but it was clear um, that this is a game changer. And um, we're in a great opportunity to partner with, uh, well, now Giffels uh, and Mr. Arroyo. Uh, it's a very, very slick product. It's sophisticatedly simple. It's very user friendly. And it's a real game changer for our community, uh, not only from our planning department, but also from the developers and potential investors and entrepreneurs in our township. It's really a great, great product. I think it saves. I'd be curious, uh, maybe Ms. Bauer can help us with the actuarial numbers and do some quantitative assessments how many man hours we will save in the planning department uh, it's a tough number but I'm sure it's high uh, the amount of phone calls and inquiries and frustration and um, this is a real game changer for us it's a great it's a great investment in our township thank you 
Any further comments on the board? Clerk Barry. Thank you. I have uh, quite a few questions on this um, particular item. First one that I have is, uh, I will state first off that I was definitely one of the board members and I think there may have been uh, a couple of others who thought that this was going to be included when um, we looked at the Giffels Webster contract. Now, um, I would have voted to hire Giffels Webster even without clear zoning. It was just something that I would have, that I was very excited to see that we had access to. So um, for me, that was the cherry on the top of that. So um, my question, I have a couple of questions. The first one is, and this is just really for transparency purposes, I think people need to know, and Trustee Joseph already started to disclose some of that too, but um, is clear zoning a product that is available? Is, it, is Giffels Webster a sole source vendor for this product? Are they the only ones who sell it? Um, and if so, can you purchase it without being a client of Giffels Webster? Um, yes, this is our product. We're the only, we invented it, basically. I, I invented it with my team. Uh, we are exclusive. It, there's nobody else that offers this product. Um, and um, once you're on, you, you can't purchase it without using Giffels Webster because we're the sole source. So there's no other option. So it's not being retailed to others who don't use your service services. In order to be able to have the option to purchase it, you need to be a Giffels um, client. Uh, there, well, there are some communities that don't use us for planning services that just hire us to do clear zoning. So just let me, I'll be clear about that. Mm -hmm. There are, you know, we don't, for example, Steamboat Springs, Colorado, I don't do their site plan reviews and I don't go to their planning commission meetings. I just do clear zoning for them. So there are some communities like that. Uh, but the majority of the clear zoning communities, we also are providing planning services to. And are there other uh, comparable um, software products on the market to clear zoning? Um, there really is nothing that does everything that this product does. There are some um, products that try to have some buttons that you can hyperlink, uh, but when you start to look at them, None of them do what this does. None of them breaks your entire ordinance down, reorganizes into the seven articles that make sense, and incorporates all these features that I went into. There is no product that is exactly like this. So that leads me to my next question, because from a clerk's perspective, um, you know, we're, we're obviously, we have the statutory responsibility of the code of ordinances. So sure. that falls you know, solely with, with us. Um, and I actually know Kathy Bushier is very well in Washington Township. I didn't get a chance to talk to her about this, but um, I, she's, I trust her uh, judgment on these things uh, very much. Um, she's a very well-respected clerk. Mm -hmm. But just for my information so that I know, um, as you know, we're finishing up our recodification. Mm -hmm. um, and I have some concerns about literally pulling it out of the current code of ordinances and creating its own volume. I did go on Washington's website and looked at that and how that was structured. So uh, one of my questions is, um, as amendments occur, um, and obviously the clerk's, our clerk's department is responsible for um, doing all the things that are necessary with regards to zoning or to any ordinance amendment, um, how does that work in concert so that it will be, uh, so we can make sure that the right hand knows what the left hand is doing with that regard. Um, and how yes. will that also affect recodification efforts as well? Okay, those are really good questions. Um, first of all, yes, when, with clear zoning, the, the code companies cannot adopt this format because it doesn't work with the way their codes are structured. You couldn't get the functionality that clear zoning has with the structure of the code company. So what happens is, the zoning code comes out of the codification. Generally, most, I, we haven't had an issue with this, um, with the code companies. They will, when you go to the zoning code on whatever that code company is, they will typically provide a link back to your website where this zoning code will sit. So if somebody happens to go there, they'll find their way back to this. Um, when you make changes to clear zoning, once it's adopted, it gets processed just like you would with a code company. You, know, you send them your changes, they send you back the, the, ch the pages. We would do that for your zoning code. So um, right now, and this is, it's been this way for many, many years, um, we charge $30 a page. So if you do a five page amendment, you're amending five pages, it's gonna be $150 to, to make the change. And what's included in that is we change those five pages, we reset all the hyperlinks, we give you a packet 
digital packet that has the pages that were changed, so you have a record of that, and then you get a brand new up-to-date code to re-upload to your website, so your, your, your zoning code is always up-to-date. We generally have about a two-week turnaround, so as soon as the township board will approve a zoning ordinance amendment and you send it to us, you will typically have a brand new zoning ordinance fully updated for you to put back on your website within two weeks. And that way there's not the lag time that you get with a lot of code companies where you're waiting or you've got just the amendments posted and you have to go back and forth with us. It's gonna be in your code, totally new and fresh within about two weeks from the time you adopt it. But it's not actually within our code, correct? It's within clear zoning. It's not on the code company's website, it's on your website. I understood and I understand the and I don't have an issue with you know linking and having them in different places on the website my primary concern is pulling it out of the code and then again because we've just gone through a rut we're nearly at the end of recodification all of that's already been done and now we paid a considerable amount of money in legal fees to have that done and now we're you're essentially gonna be taking that all apart that's just been done redoing it all over again Oh. I, I see that the value, I definitely see the value in the, in the tool, in the product. I mean, I, I can see that. I always have, as you know, five years ago we met, right? Four right. or five years ago. Yes. And I was a big advocate then of the functionality and what it will allow. My concerns now, uh, I think it's a little bit different maybe if it was or perhaps um, we just hadn't gone through our recodification yet. Mm -hmm. So I was a little concerned about the impact um, on the code and how those changes would occur. So um, I'll be honest with you, I still do have some concerns about that um, that haven't been fully resolved for me. I appreciate your answers, um, but I just, I'm still a little bit concerned about, about that particular aspect of, of, of this. And I appreciate that. I think what you're gonna find is going through that recodification process for all your other ordinances, it's gonna be great. You know, you're gonna have that all in one place, but the way zoning works, and when you look at what this product can offer, I, I, it just doesn't work well within that cons the constraints of typical code codification online. And this provides people with so many more opportunities for customer service and to get answers to questions easier. Uh, if, I mean, if you go on Farmington Hills's website and you go to their zoning, it'll link you to their clear zoning code. If you go to Novi's, it'll do the same thing. You go to Bloomfield Township, you go to Bloomfield, all it's all gonna link you right through. So they keep their codification for all their other ordinances, but they link to clear zoning for zoning. Trustee Joseph. Yeah, just um, not to belabor the whole thing, but the questions that were asked by the clerk were questions that were asked during the uh, QBS and the, um, the process. Mr. Laf Mr. Lafada, Treasurer Lafada, uh, Trustee Domingue, the um, sole source, um, the sole source vendor, um, Clearview, Clear, Clear Zoning is the product. Um, it's like going into Marcos with some flour and saying, you know, what would you charge me to make this pizza? You don't, you just don't do that. It's, it is, it is the product, and you also don't, um, you, you don't go and get the uh, entire movie package without paying, you know, Comcast an installation fee. Uh, so, so you get the product, right. but you have to put your data in. So it couldn't right. possibly be uh, part of a uh, planning uh, uh, contract as you're looking at plan reviews and things. Clear zoning is a, is a separate product. And um, I can appreciate the work that the clerk's office has done with, uh, is it uh, E-Code 360? And we went from, you know, uh, blowing off ordinance books uh, with six <laughs> inches of dust to at least a codification process, and so I know that there's a lot of work that's been done there. But the next step, um, we've we've gone from um, you know tin cans to uh, analog, and now it's time to go to digital. Is the uh, if if you're codifying ordinance without a review, um, then you're codifying potential garbage. And this process uh, has built in a review of everything that we do as a government agency and an opportunity to do an audit. And so as you're coming across, instead of simply codifying garbage, you bring forward something to the board that says, this is something that you might want to take a look at. And therefore, we don't have uh, what we've had, Mr. Supervisor, when you started talking about an ordinance a month, 
um, we, we could have held to that and still been ordinances you know behind we we were actually debating here at our most one of our recent board meetings the construction of a hundred foot tower uh, and worried about if the tower toppled over what would it take out in a hundred foot path with no discussion about the fact that the towers don't collapse that way anymore the engineering causes them to fall within themselves yet we have ordinance that dictates what can be built within a hundred feet of a tower it's it's just uh, it's 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 uh, archaic this is the future and uh, again I appreciate uh, clerk uh, I would just ask that we not marry ourselves to old technology or inferior technology and be afraid of advancement here because this is clearly a very sophisticated product and we need to we need to move on this uh, we, we've we've been talking about um, disappointing to hear that she met with you five years ago and we just brought you in months ago because this is this is so far superior to anything that's out there and for those of us that had spent time you know researching this it was clear and when you were in a room one after the other with your competitors um, you're a very humble guy because this is this is a slam dunk there's, there's just nothing out there clerk Barry and then I'll bring it up to the public Thank you. So one of the other questions that I would have on this, um, and again, maybe I'm just a little more sensitive to it because I, I know I'm held to, you know, state law on this. Um, and it's just me, nobody else. So I'm a little more sensitive. But um, I also, my understanding is if at some point in the future, the township chooses to discontinue its relationship with Giffels Webster, that and I see you shaking your head, you probably already know what I'm going to ask, mm -hmm. um, that we no longer have access to clear zoning. Um, actually, that's actually not true. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that because my concern was if, if that occurred at some point, how do we ensure that everything that we are going to be putting into clear zoning and all of the ordinance that is attached to that, um, that the clerks, whoever the clerk is at that time, that the clerk receives um, and has a full record of that ordinance um, and all of the associated amendments? Another really good question, and I'll give you two scenarios. Um, let's say, um, we hope this doesn't happen, let's say some point in the future you decide you don't want us to be your planning consultant anymore, and we are not. You have the option of continuing to use the clear zoning service. We would just be more like a code company where we would just maintain clear zoning. So you would work with somebody else, they would, take the amendments through the process, you would adopt them, then you would send them to us, and we would put them in the clear zoning format. We would not advise you on your zoning ordinances um, in terms of the content. You, somebody else would be doing that. Uh, we would just be code, it, much like we do for Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Somebody else works with them in Colorado, develops their ordinance amendments, they do them, you know, they take care of um, amendments. In Louisiana is probably the best example. We, we have a, a retainer in, in Ruston, Louisiana, where we um, do some work with them, but they do some of their own amendments. And when they do amendments, they send them to us. We put them in the code, uh, their clear zoning code, and, and send it back to them. Okay, that's one scenario. Scenario number two is, for some reason, you decide you don't want to have the clear zoning format anymore. Maybe there's something you like better, or you just want to go back to what you had before. Um, if you choose to do that, we would then um, provide you with a Word document with all the text from your zoning ordinance, and we would provide that back to you if you were to discontinue the service. That way you could then take that and format it in whatever you want to format it to. You'd give it to some other code company. They would take that text, and they would put it in whatever the format you choose to move to. So those would be two scenarios if you chose not to continue um, in the future. Well, we don't think you're going to do that, but if you did, there's two options you would have. Thank you. Well, why don't you the, the board go over and read that chart? I went over and you can't even read what he's demonstrating for you. Now that stuff on that wall cannot even be read when you go right under it. Well, and we can I fix that really blind. quick. And I've sit here all this time about this subject. How large would you like it? <laughs> now, I came here tonight to discuss about a million and a half or two million dollars worth of stuff that's on this agenda. Later on down the agenda, those and, items and come you, up. And you want me to ca calm down? No, I just want you to stay, okay. stay to the, uh, the topic well, here, which is the clear how, zoning. How much longer will this particular thing stay 
I'll go get a nap and come back. <laughs> We're just about done with this item, I believe. I don't know where he came from and who he was, but I come down here to look over these people's names. And Thank I you, Mr. Start Miller. Asking questions about who is this guy and that guy that's on this thing. They gave me five pages of this stuff this afternoon. Five pages from that clerk's office. Tonight I get two pages. Thank you. That's an example of what you guys have not seen. Do you have the five page or the two page? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for the I still. Just in response, one of the advantages of this is you can look at it as a two page document if you want to look at it that way, or you can zoom in as close as you want and see it. So it's really user friendly regardless of um, how your eyesight might be or what you're looking for, how close you want to look at something. And I want to know what's the R1 district and I can click on it and it takes me right to the R1 district. So, and then if I want to zoom in on something here, I can zoom in on that. So it's great from all those perspectives because you can get it at whatever size you want it to be. Thank you. Some uh, strongly support this product, strongly support this item. The fact of the matter is, is our township is growing by several hundred millions of dollars in new construction every year. The mistakes, um, whether it's connectability on sidewalks or the legal issues that come up due to our code not being updated um, is immeasurable. And this investment will, will pay back dividends long, long into the future. And it's uh, something I'm very excited with moving forward. Any further comments from the board? Motion by Trustee Joseph, support by Supervisor Acovetti. Clerk Berry, please call the roll. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Demink. Aye. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Clerk Berry, no. Motion passes. 8G, approve a request from the Planning and Zoning Department to update the Township's master plan with Giffels Webster. The cost is $89,660, building 14 equal installments of $6,404.28 from GL number 101-373-804 with a budget amendment in the amount of the purchase. I'll make a motion to approve as stated. Support. So, motion by Supervisor Riccovetti, support by Trustee Joseph. Director Paling and Mr. Aurora. Thank you. Uh, this item is for the updated master plan. Our current master plan was adopted in 2002, so we are well overdue for, for an update. Um, there was a, a draft update um, from years ago that has kind of been passed along. I think maybe Trustee DeMink might be the only one from when that <laughs> originally came about. But um, yeah, it's, it's long overdue, so I'm going to turn it over to Rod to talk about you know, the scope and uh, any questions you have. Um, I, I did provide that in your packet with the timeline for completion um, and you know what, what, what's gonna happen in each one of those tasks. Once again, good evening. Uh, when we started working with you as your consultant, one of the first things we did was um, we wanted to listen and, and hear your concerns about the future of the community and what your expectations are for what the master plan should be. And we heard a couple of different things. One, yes, we need to have the master plan updated. We're, kind of, you know, we're definitely at that point in time where we need to take a fresh look at land use. So that's a key component. But we also heard a couple of other things. We heard one, that there is a strong desire to have a pathways plan, a complete streets plan, one that looks at non-motorized transportation in the community so that you have an opportunity to provide better um, services to your residents, those that want to get around the community without being in a car where they can walk or they can bike. And you wanted a plan for that, one that would actually be a plan you could adopt and then put you in a position where you could actually go seek funding now from other funding sources to help pay for those pathways to expand the ability of people to use them. So we took that into consideration and included that in this scope. In addition, in talking with, um, with, with your planning um, department and um, talking with other township staff members, 
we learned that there's some focus areas that you want to spend a little bit more time on in the community, areas that you think um, may be of, of special consideration. And seven different um, focus areas were identified um, as part of that process. And so what we've included in this scope based on that input is that there would be focus plans within the master plan that look at those seven different areas and provide for um, the opportunity to um, drill down a little bit more for those particular areas than you typically would with a master plan. The other thing that we heard was that public input is very important. Whoops. Um, so in addition to the normal process, we identified the need to try to have specific um, open houses for uh, three different geographical areas to try to be able to drill down once again on some of those focus areas and then also to have a community-wide open house. So there are really a lot of opportunities for people to come and, and state their opinions and to give suggestions and ideas. Um, we also wanted to have a, a, a survey that would be online, much like the one we're doing for you now for your Parks and Recreation Plan update. There's a specific Parks and Rec focused survey on your website. We would do one that's land use focused and also focused on pathways and complete streets so that we can get input from people on where they think pathways should go or, or where they think maybe bike lanes should go or maybe they're going to have some input on future development and future land use. We want to hear what that input is. So we have a, a process for that. Um, we also have a tool that we've developed called Picture This, which is a way where some, if someone's in the community and they have their phone and they see something they like or they don't like, they can take a picture of it, upload it through their phone to a tagged location on a map and make some comments to participate in this process. We're using this in a number of different communities. We just used it for the Rochester Hills um, master plan, and that master plan is actually going to be receiving an award for public input um, in September. So we want to have those types of tools for people that either like to come to meetings or don't like to come to meetings. We want to hear from all those folks because there's people you'll never get to come through this door to come to a meeting because they're just not going to do it. But we still want to hear from them, so we want to have online surveys, we want to have online tools you can use with your phone, and we want to have open houses where hopefully those folks will all come out and be part of this process. So um, the, the final point that I'm going to make is that as part of the process, we want to make sure that this is a plan that actually has a roadmap for implementation. We want to focus on the ideas rather than having it all loaded up front with a lot of data. We want to try to just summarize that data and then get right into plan recommendations. We want to kick it off with a joint meeting with the Township Board and the Planning Commission. And we want to hear from you and the Planning Commission and have like a work session where we can explore some of this information to kick it off and then bring it back so that both the Planning Commission and Township Board um, have, have a vision that they can both be behind. Because when this plan is adopted, we want it to be something that you turn to on a regular basis that guides your land use decisions. And if it's done the right way, you will use it all the time. And in fact, we hope, and the way this will be structured is that on an annual basis, at a minimum, the Planning Commission will review the action items that need to be done and start to prioritize them and start chipping away. And then the, the Township Board can have into, input into that as well. So that's the structure, that's the idea. It's, it's um, based upon uh, some of the listening that we've done and the, the, the timeline that's involved uh, typically is in the neighborhood of, of 12 to 14 months um, to go through a process like this. This is something you don't rush through because it takes time to get the information, get the public input, and then go through the, the planning process. So um, that's my short summary. I'll be happy to try to answer any questions. Thank you. One quick uh, comment. This document is vital for the future of our community. It's going to be the roadmap for, for growth, for development, for roadways, for non-motorized paths, for our assets that, um, that, that are just not being utilized, like our drains and our waterfront. Um, this investment is, again, equal, very similar to the comments that I had last, um, very vital because the mistakes that get made that cause traffic issues or infrastructure issues, whether it's water lines, sewer lines that are running over top of each other and need to be replaced. Those mistakes 10 years down the road are big 
big mistakes. And the lack of connective connectivity um, for our non-motorized system was something that right when I walked in the door, that was a priority. It's one of the reasons why I'm sitting here. The safety of that, the emphasizing our waterfront, emphasizing our drains, um, all of it. So yes, it's a big number. Doesn't happen very often. Every, I think we're about 20 years out. Um, but this overall in enhanced scope with those focus areas, and some, and some are very, going to be very obvious, 23 and Gratiot. We know the nightmare that's there. If this tool was in place and planned back then, we might have a safer place um, as we move forward. We're also a growing community, so we have a tremendous amount of growth left to happen in our township. So this, this number, although a very big number, the return on investment is going to be immeasurable, and it's something I support very strongly. And I'm happy it's here now because I think I've been asking for something like this for approximately two years. And we have the right vendor. We have, and, and uh, this is a product that I think is going to fit with our community. Trustee Domingue. I think it's a great idea. I like to say it's a large project. Um, we started working on the master plan. I've been off planning for three years. Trustee Joseph's uh, been on it the last three. The Planning Commission was working on a master plan, and we did a lot of work on it, and those guys put a lot of time and effort to it, but this is what we need with your firm and for your firm to move us forward, especially with the development that is going on, stated by the supervisor, and some areas that need to be done. Uh, I know Trustee Joseph's worked on a lot of things since his three years down in planning, and I believe... Uh, He's in total agreement that this needs to move forward uh, along with the plan that was developed by the people he works with, the Planning Commission. So I welcome the advancement and looking forward to it. Thank you. Rusty Joseph. Thank you. Um, the the uh, master plan is something that um, I think uh, coming on the Planning Commission three years ago, there had already been a tremendous amount of work by the commission members then to try to put forward. And um, I think we kind of stumbled our way through a presentation to the board with the proposed master plan, um, but it's it's such a it's such a big task, and um, the the difference when you look at the master plans that ha that has been done by Mr. Arroyo and his his uh, company for other communities, what you're what you're immediately drawn to is comparing one master plan to the previous master plan, the way you would look at our master plan. It is, our current proposal is 80% history. It tells us a lot about where we've been uh, and not a lot about where we would like to go. So uh, this is a, uh, again, it's, it's a very, very, very advanced uh, sort of take on the master plan and it looks uh, critically at what it is that you're trying to do in your community. Um, it's not just 23 and Gratiot for me. Um, just anybody who lives anywhere uh, close to SAS and 23 that tries to go anywhere near Chesterfield Road on the weekends. It's bumper to bumper. The, the design of all of the businesses along 23, each of them having their own entrance, and the uh, bottlenecks that are created there are horrific. I mean, they're absolutely horrific. So when people come in and they start hearing about development in Chesterfield, they go, where is it going to go? You can't, you can't even navigate from, you know, uh, the custard place to Home Depot without, you know, budgeting an hour and a half for 23-mile road traffic. So to have a master plan that takes a look at those challenges and says, um, not, not only will we try to address this problem, but we'll prevent future you know, problems in the north end or, you know, it, it is very comprehensive review. The other thing that I like about the proposal is uh, very detailed what we get in the way of a work product and how the process and product is built. It's not give me 86,000 and in 14 months I'll give you something you're happy with. It is a process and it is uh, laid out with a number of tasks that invite the community and the board and planning commission members and um, I sometimes, like everybody else, get discouraged when we don't have big, big boardrooms. And on the nights when we have an, an issue where a lot of people are impacted and you see a big boardroom, it's, it's, very, uh, it's, why, it's why I ran. You'd love to see community participation. We don't get that in the form of meetings, 
but you can't be fooled to think that the citizenry aren't engaged. And if you doubt me, post something on Facebook and ask about whether or not the township should have a fruit market and watch and see if you don't have uh, you know, thousands of people commenting and posting. And when that project came in, they said they were going to do this. And you start to realize, uh, you know, a lot of people are really, really engaged. Uh, they're just turned, to, to, you know, turned off necessarily by uh, politics. And they don't want to come and sit for three hours, listen to people bicker. But they know their community. And so your, your master plan um, engages and taps into that. And that's where you'll get, uh, you know, through multiple sources, town halls, board meetings, <coughs> informal meetings, uh, social media, uh, surveys. And then you can get a real feel for what's going on in the community and develop a master plan that reflects the wants and needs of the township. Again, um, you know, from the first presentation and then uh, doing my own research on you and Giffels and then seeing your competition and then working alongside the product that the township was paying for. Um, you know, I, I, I have um, um, a lot of pride in the fact that residents, uh, when they ask me my opinion on something, uh, can get it straight from the heart and I tell it like it is. And uh, anybody that asks me about this uh, endeavor and this planning, um, it's, it's something I feel very strong about and I really do appreciate the amount of time and patience that you and your team have taken to lay out your vision for what you see is, is uh, in the best interest of our township. It's clear that this is a passion of yours. It's a very personal um, thing that you do. This is not a uh, business uh, that's just out there to make money. It's, uh, you take great pride in seeing some of the things that you help create in other communities uh, come to fruition. And the fact that you're now in Chesterfield uh, makes me feel really good about the direction that we're going. So um, I don't know, Clerk, if you record the dates, but maybe you might want to put down a marker where Mr. Acrovetti and I are in uh, lockstep on this because it doesn't happen very often. I think it speaks to the product you bring. So thanks, Mr. Royal. Treasurer Lafada. Um, I'm, I'm in, in favor of uh, the master plan, but when I look at the uh, process, um, the uh, focus areas, the seven focus areas, are in place before there's any public input. Uh, residents... No, it's only the assessment. It's only We're the assessment. We're doing an assessment and then there will be a words, separate part the that's the, the plan focus after areas the public. could change, could, could vary from what they are right now based on public input? It, absolutely. Okay. Um, as long as it's within the general scope of what we originally in, included, yes. So the, and so the idea is we do an assessment up front then we have public input, then we create the plans for those focus areas after the public input. Yeah, because I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, public would be very, you know, interested in what the township's going to be. And uh, a lot of them would like to have some input. Uh, I, I, some of them I talked to haven't had any input recently or have asked for things that never happen. And if, if I may, towards that end, when we have the open houses, the advantage of doing the assessment up front, when we have the open house with the public for those focus areas, we'll have boards that summarize information about the focus areas so they can come in and look at those and be informed and then give us their opinion based upon more than just, oh, we happen to be here, we want your information. So it's, it's a way of it making a better informed decision, I think. Thank you. Clerk Barry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, well, if we're, if we're keeping track today of people who agree who don't normally, and add myself and Treasurer Lafada to that, because we're often strange bedfellows, but today perhaps we are, because I have some of the um, similar concerns when I saw the seven focus areas and how you were going to get to that, um, that we had all this plan laid out, but we hadn't had public input yet. Um, so that was one of the things that I thought of as well. So I'm glad that he brought that up and I'm glad you addressed it. One of the other things that came to mind for me that I, I know that the treasurer also um, is uh, particularly sensitive to as well is I see many times throughout the document um, that you know, you're going to be preparing items for the township staff to do or that you're coordinating with the township staff. It seems like um, that this isn't, you know, it's clear that this isn't an all in for 90 grand, you do the whole thing, that there is going to be some township resources that are going to have to be expended in terms of staffing and so forth. So I was just wondering if you could elaborate for us what, uh, what kind of um, involvement there's going to be from the township staff's perspective. I imagine it would be Director Palin who would be involved. And I just 
for example, in, when it comes to um, public hearings and notices and all that sort of a thing, um, you know, is that something too that you know the clerk's department is going to need to be involved mm -hmm. with as well? Mm -hmm. um, and if you can kind of elaborate just sure. a little bit in terms of what the expected township resources are going to be so that we can get a sense of that. Um, and then I do have another question for you on civic engagement and specifically how I see your, your um, items of, of what you're planning to do. My question is how? How are we planning to get civic engagement? Are we going to engage in social media? Are we going to be doing mailings? Are we going to be, how are we going to be going to reach out to people, not only to notify them and let them know when all of these various meetings and opportunities mm -hmm. are going to be presented, but also, um, you know, how they can actually participate. So, uh, you know, I'm, the, the format looks good, but I just, the what, you know, the what of it looks good. I'm just questioning, you know, what your plan is for the how, to how to get the civic engagement. And I'll just say that um, I think that, you know, this, this is something that I don't think people are aware of, that, but every five years, state law requires us to review our master plan. Um, and this is something that has been dragging on and on. And I think a lot of people have gotten frustrated with the progress or lack thereof that was made on this. So I really appreciate what's been prepared. And I can certainly see, even though it is a very big number, it's almost $90,000, that in order to get this done, um, I can definitely see where that would be warranted. I'd just like you to address those couple of areas of concern. Again, very good questions. Um, I'm going to address the last thing you said first in terms of a lot of times communities have been dragging their feet with plans. You're, you're not alone. Um, we've been brought into many communities to take over and finish because they couldn't get the project done because it wasn't happening. So we're the guys that are known as being the ones that come in and get the project done. So just just to let you know that. Um, in terms of involvement by staff versus what we're gonna be, do, for, be doing, for example, um, the notices that have to be there, you have to have an intent to plan, all, the, all these notices, uh, public hearing notices, we will draft those for you, for you to review and put those in place. So that's something we take care of, um, just so you know up front, well, that's our job is to help you. Um, obviously, if there are mailings that have to be done um, for those notices, that's typically done by the township, but we prepare all the, the language that you're going to need to put that in place. Uh, in terms of other involvement, certainly we're going to be probably discussing this every month with the Planning Commission. So uh, whatever packet material, we will prepare that material. The township staff will be distributing it like they would with other packet material. So it's not, I would say, a substantial burden. Uh, the focus area meetings, all the public input meetings, um, we will be running those meetings. We will be preparing the materials for those meetings. We'll need some assistance from township staff to help find locations and be there uh, to be part of our team. But once again, I don't think it's a significant burden um, other than to help us find locations and, and be there as part of the process. But um, once we're in those meetings, we're running the meeting basically. We're taking care of putting all the materials together. We're putting the, the questionnaires people fill out. Uh, we're collecting that. We're summarizing that. We're running, we're running with all of that. Um, in terms of public and in, civic involvement, public engagement, as I mentioned, there's many different levels, some which are digital, some are filling out a simple form at, a, at an open house. Uh, we wanna make it so that there's lots of levels that people can, depending on their comfort level, can become involved. Uh, you mentioned social media. You have the social media channels already in place, so there's no sense in reinventing the wheel. We will do one of two things in terms of getting information out there. We will either create a web page that people can go to, or we will give you information that you can put on the planning page if you want. It depends on your preference. Um, we Sometimes we will just do it, and it'll be a page on our site where people can go to and you can link to it, or you may prefer to have all that information right on the planning page of your website. We can work that out, whatever you're most comfortable with, but we wanna make sure that information about the master plan is on the website, and that if drafts become available after the planning commission reviews them, we'd like to have that available for the public to review that information. So that's gonna be um, uh, part of the service that we're providing is getting you that information. Um, we will also, when we're having the open houses, and for example, we wanna, what we typically do is we create um, a poster for each one that we do. We will provide you with a digital copy of that, and then 
Um, if there's places that you think um, it needs to go, they, that can be printed on 11 by 17 paper or eight and a half by 11 paper, and they can be put in windows. But we create all that information. It just needs to get out there somehow. And a lot of times planning commission members and township board members know places where that can go. And they might hand it to a few business owners to put in their window. Uh, there's an open house coming, uh, and we'll have a notice that you can put on your, on your um, township website. You can put on your Facebook or whatever social media media um, accounts you have. We want to make sure that you're getting the word out regularly about public input opportunities and we will provide you with some blurbs that you can then just put on to your social media channels to get the word out. Trustee Joseph. Uh, just again want to say thanks for your thanks for your uh, professionalism in the response. I'm not sure which one of the sacred cows of uh, Clerk Barry's wheelhouse that you've wandered into, but you've uh, really drawn some, some uh, pointed questions here tonight in areas that I'm not accustomed to hearing from the clerk. So we've had, you know, uh, rock concerts where we have no concerns about printing and things, but now we're worried about public input. So it's interesting, uh, but I appreciate the way you've responded to them. Um, the, the area that uh, Treasurer Lafada touched on having to do with task uh, two, the analysis, and the seven areas, um, it, was a, it was a sort of red flag to me, and I asked the same questions in the, uh, in, in the uh, introductory to, to the uh, QBS team, and that is, I think uh, you're well aware, and uh, the diplomacy that you've you know, kind of conducted yourself with is uh, remarkable, and it's what we need because we are deeply divided uh, on uh, certain areas involving direction in this township. So we, we've had a number of very, uh, uh, you know, spirited debates and sometimes, you know, crossing into unproductive. Um, so there are no uh, seven in stone tasks. And I appreciated the way you said this is sort of the uh, jumping off point, if you will. It's the, it's the discussion starter. It is not a uh, conclusionary finding. Uh, we are in the process of finding out as a community what it is uh, directionally with some, you know, shepherding from the elected officials as it should be. But we are not the, uh, you know, tablet makers. This is the process that generates, you know, how we get there. And, uh, you know, who's going to pay for social media questions? I'm just, uh, I really am floored by that one, but um, we're all getting along tonight, so I don't want to wander into any area that's going to upset that. Uh, I appreciate the accountability that your plan also incorporates, and that is uh, a 14-month plan with an estimated cost of roughly 6000 uh, with detailed analysis on what work has been provided. This isn't a request for a $90,000 check and I'll see you in 14 months with your finished product. It is a process and uh, I like the way you open the books and I'll show you exactly what I've done. In this period, it's, it's exactly where uh, Mr. Lafada, who has consistently been a fiscal conservative uh, and a monitor of those kinds of things. Uh, there are a lot of vendors that really don't enjoy working uh, with you know, the reviews that, that they get from the treasurer's office. I respect it. You, you have zero problem with it and announce that from the front. So uh, for those reasons and the many others that I've laid out, this is a way overdue uh, expenditure. And everything that we do on the Planning Commission, if I've heard, well, this is part of our master plan as the basis for whether or not we're, we're approving or not approving. And if your master plan is garbage, how can you really put anything uh, in the way of stock into a plan that's predicated on a master plan when it's so inadequate. So uh, this generate this this is the centrifuge of the whole deal. This is this is really a must. Thank you. One thing I did want to clarify, although I am unbelievably excited to have this document at the end of the day, because it's going to put us in a much better position um, to chase the grant opportunities and to put us on the map for some of the substantial construction projects that our community unfortunately hasn't been in the discussion it we're going to be it's going to help position myself and the team to put us in those discussions a safe way across i-94 we have six six expressways and we do not have a safe way to get across and every community south does i-94 23 mile road substantial inter interchange removal or, 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 or replacement 
you just have to drive to Lansing and see what's going on or drive through Oakland County and see what's going on with these interchanges, whether they're, uh, they're updated and they have got character. Um, those, uh, the, the, nothing's gonna stop for the aggressive plan that we're gonna be pushing for gap closures for increasing our pathway system in those 18 months for pushing to put us on the radar screen to see more um, improvements such as the Jefferson Road Bridge over the Salt River with a nice path attached with character. Those projects are, are gonna continue in those next 12 to 18 months. With this document, it's gonna put us in a lot better position to get grant and funding op opportunities. So none of, nothing's gonna stop. Um, if anything, it's gonna accelerate um, gap closures, uh, road projects, uh, crossing projects, um, waterways enhancements. Um, nothing's gonna stop in the next 12 to 18 months, but when this is done, we're gonna be in a heck of a lot better position to get the much needed funding. Any further comments from the board before I bring it, uh, bring it up for a vote or up to the public? Or any comments from the public? Seeing no further comments, motion by Supervisor Recovetti, support by Trustee Joseph. Clerk Barry, please call the roll. Supervisor Ecovetti. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Clerk Berry. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Item 8H, request from the Director of Facilities and Operations to award Ultimate Lawn Services the limited township landscape contract at a total cost not to exceed $8,490 from GL number 101265931 and GL number 205336931 for 12 weeks of service. So moved. Motion by Clerk Berry. A support. Support by Trustee Joseph. Director Sonnenberg. Good evening. Um, obviously we touched on this earlier in the meeting. This is um, an effort that we've been working on just to kind of gather some data on cost and efficiencies. And this, um, is really the first step that kind of captures some of our smaller sites. Here in Chesterfield, we have, obviously, that most people know, we got some really small sites like the fire stations, the youth center, and a couple others. And then we got some really large sites like Brandenburg and Pollard. Um, on an efficiency for scale, when our guys show up at one of the larger sites, we can put a full day in, keep our equipment on one site. We're not running around from place to place. So our value increases. Also, when we're on bigger mowers, cutting bigger sections of grass, rather than trailering smaller mowers to and from. You can see on a, on a price scale, like to cut most of those sites, it's $80 per week, which includes weed whipping. So what I did is I put together a, basically a test proposal. What I'd like to do is run this model till the end of the season, which is uh, approximately 12 weeks. And what this, what this $8,400 includes right now is the smaller sites, the youth center, the fire stations, um, and the fall cleanup that's spelled out in Ultimate's proposal. Comments from the board. Uh, just a question. The, um, <coughs> the contract is limited. I like the way that you've defined the specific areas, targeting those that make it difficult to house equipment on site and uh, much, much more um, convenient in terms of a uh, sort of mobile uh, service being able to access those. So I, th I think you put a lot of thought into that. Um, do you see this and do you anticipate this being something that you could uh, at the end of the 12 weeks uh, during the off season, come back to the board with a proposal that could look at uh, grass cutting across the board for, for the entirety of the township or uh, a more comprehensive contract in the spring? So my, my position to date with my prior experience is on the smaller sites, they can really compete. But when you get to a larger site, like let's say Pollard, where you're cutting 30 acres of property or Brandenburg, where it's nine acres, we have big tractors, bigger equipment, and that goes back to like what we were talking about earlier. We get one of our staff in a large tractor, and he's moving a lot of, he's cutting a lot of grass. He becomes more valuable. But in a small X mark or small mower, single deck, you got a guy running around. Anytime we're using that equipment, it's always cheaper to sub it out. When we're in house and we have the big equipment at our on staff, and we can get a guy out to Pollard, and we're out there cutting grass and doing repairs, and we can keep him on site. Ultimately, what I see is. We're going to be doing more work at these parks because we're going to improve the parks. When we introduce stuff like the Brandenburg Shoreline, the idea is to start doing improvements and the guys to stay there all day. 
do more weeding, more you know landscaping, more building maintenance. And then in the summer, we're lucky enough where we have summer help. Some of those areas, like let's say we got a guy in a big mower, we can back up on our smaller mowers with seasonal staff and fill in the gaps and do some of that. I think there is value to have some guys on staff because we got a lot of issues to cover and having some parts that we can move around to do various things, they become more valuable. But cutting these small sites, I think it's just inefficient. We're, we're, we're moving a lot of equipment in these small sites. Yes. So the sites that we have, uh, the property where we have sort of outbuildings where we're housing the equipment, that's not cost uh, effective to contract out. We're, we're, we're doing well in those areas. You're talking uh, in, at the, at the uh, completion of this contract, do you anticipate coming back with potentially uh, a more uh, comprehensive relationship with the... Uh we're we're going we're gonna to look at all aspects of labor. You know, obviously I like a more skilled workforce, somebody you can depend on to do multiple things, more of a Swiss Army knife than just yeah. cutting grass. So we're going to look at every aspect of our labor force, even the snow, the grass. When I, the idea was exactly what you said, start this process, go through and revisit it. We've also included in that packet even you know a section of the main office. When I look at this facility, for example, I see the island from the bike path in, yeah. an opportunity to get an outside vendor, but from the bike path out, we're cutting large fields. You can bring in a tractor and we can you know roll through the outside fields. There is so much work to be done in this township. Like you said, you had pointed out earlier, the bridge and other things. We need to get some of these guys off mowers and doing some more of the nuts and bolts maintenance. These buildings are, 20 years old plus, and like anything that gets to 20 years, there's going to be more stuff that needs to be done. In order to keep up, we got to stay on top of a lot of these issues. Well, last question, if I may, Mr. Supervisor. The, um, uh, one, one of the proposals that came about I hadn't really, hadn't really heard of, but it was uh, a, a really uh, common sense idea that was right in front of us was um, the uh, utilization of waterways on the uh, bike paths, the non-motorized uh, do you see a relationship where our uh, people could potentially prepare those sites for uh, a use like that, a non-motorized use? Uh, could we could we get there if we were able to free them from you know the uh, the, the less skill required, just kind of grass cutting uh, type type jobs? I agree. Some of our equipment, we got some um, arm tractors and some large tractors that we can do some of the more complicated stuff. That's something we could keep in house, absolutely. And dollars and cents wise, it would make us more valuable, our crew and our guys, and we would be able to do those trickier areas. 100%, there's pathways we have like down hooker when you go down that sidewalk yeah. down there, yeah. there's areas like that that we can start to work on to open up, you know, to free up some of those areas. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Director Sonnenberg, the, some discussions about the, the, um, the motion as stated um, included $8,490, which did not include this facility, the front side of this facility for those 12 weeks. I, we had some discussions about this facility, which is in the packet at $310 per week per cut, and adding the fall cleanup for this facility to this contract. Uh, I would like to see if the motion maker and supporter would entertain an amendment to include this facility at $310 plus the fall cleanup to this contract for this 12 week period to end up end of the season. Was there a dollar amount? It was, yes there was. Okay. It would be an amendment to add a total of 300 or $3,720 for the C, for this municipal office complex and $750 for a fall cleanup for a new total cost of $12,960. I don't remember if I was the motion maker or the supporter. I think Clerk Barry was the motion oh, maker motion. and you were the supporter. I will amend my motion to reflect the changes that you uh, just stated. Continued support. Can I ask one quick question? I had to step out for a second. What, what are you going to have the uh, contractor cut here? What, what's what's so, the proposal? Um, I'm sorry I stepped out there oh, for a second. I'm sorry. The, the goal would be is from the bike path that works, the senior bike path that works around the building, not all the way out, but if you look in back of the building from the the path that goes between the memorial wall uh -huh. and then around the parking lot, basically that whole island on the inside, and then the entry approach going out to Sugarbush. Okay. For three hundred and ten dollars a week plus the fall cleanup is what we mentioned. That's not bad. So our guys would still do the as we talked about the larger areas. It's really just a test to see how this works out. Okay. Thank you. Any further comments from the board? Just one. If he wanders out again. Get 
If he wanders out again, can you find him or something? Because uh, it's getting late. I don't believe I have that authority. All right. I think the board could get it to me. Any comments from the public? Amended motion by Clerk Barry, support by Trustee Joseph, to approve the request from the Director of Facilities and Operations to award Ultimate Lawn Services the limited township landscape contract at a total cost not to exceed $12,960 from General Ledger 101-265-931 and GL number 205-336.931 for 12 weeks of service. Clerk Berry, please call the roll. Clerk Berry, aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Demink. Aye. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Eight. Aye. Request from the Director of Facilities and Operations to consolidate fire security panel monitoring services to one vendor, Dyke Service, Dyke, Dyke Security, from the current vendor or the current vendor for the municipal office and to cancel monitoring services with ADP at DPW to the cost to establish a three-year user agreement and upgrade the panels at the DPW and municipal office combined is $5,395.89. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Clerk Berry. Support. Support by Trustee Domingue. Director Sonnenberg. Yes, sir. So this is an effort to, um, we have Dyke Security that currently monitors the fire panels, the municipal office, the senior center, the youth center, and the Brandenburg toll booth. ADP really just did the deep, um, DPW. So we just want to, we were happy with Dyke Security. They actually threw in some additional mobile features so we can monitor the, mar the alarms in various ways. Uh, we're happy with their service. It's just kind of a combination. So we got one vendor instead of two. It's pretty simple. Any questions for the director? Question. Um, I, we've been talking about this contract. I actually, I think going back three years, asked that we review our security contract. I like the idea of different buildings and different departments not having different security companies. That made zero sense to me. But talking to some of my friends in the historic uh, society, like I think that some of the equipment that we're paying for was like used to, to uh, monitor the log cabin when it was new. This stuff is old. And uh, a whole, uh, you know, reboot of all of our buildings and all of our. Um, why not go out to bid on that? What, what, why enter into a three-year contract um, with arguably, you know, we, we, we have need for cameras. We have need for uh, updated equipment. Why not a bid for the whole township? I agree, and we have an out on this contract. But the key with this is, is it's just a simple service, simple monitoring alarm or burglar alarm. Even though we have a camera system here, the two are basically now separated. We are putting together, we've been working on it. In fact, Kevin and I, and um, as a crew, we've been working on a camera, door access, um, RFP. We've met with high tech and a bunch of vendors and we're putting that together now. It's a bigger picture. When I started originally, we started with a really, really big picture, trying to incorporate everything. We had met with the police department and the public safety director, and we went big pie in the sky. And it was so big that we've scaled it back camera wise and alarm wise and we're working on it but in the meantime to keep our security and save a little bit of money we'd like to keep this in place but by all means i agree with you we need to make some changes and we need to make some improvements when when do we anticipate a semi-comprehensive review of the entire security so um something that maybe um well when we had the um we've had damage at brandenburg We've had uh, vandalism and you know things that really uh, cameras would have been helpful. The uh, break-in at the uh, historic village, with the uh, damage that was done there, you know we we are not going to incur the cost of having a physical presence in all of these buildings all of the time. Cameras and a monitored camera go a long way. When do we anticipate you are you going to come forward at some point in the near future? With a, um, with a request uh, for a proposal or an opportunity to go out? Absolutely. I can, I can share with you in the very near future, if not the next board meeting, the board meeting after, we'll share with you where we're at before we, you know, when, okay. while we're sending that out. But I know one of the big issues we have here is because some of our property is so big, it's connectivity. So in other words, anytime you travel over so many feet, you either got to go to fire, fiber or wireless repeaters when it comes to cameras. So the technology, like for example, at Brandenburg, we don't have internet service. You know, I mean, we, we don't have a Comcast internet hub. All we have is Dyke Security. So one of the things we're looking at, we've already reached out to Comcast and different vendors to set up 
A, starting with internet and access, and then rolling into cameras, and where we can position that internet and access to make it mo the most sense so we put our equipment in, we're not stretching wires all over the park. Right. So we have really started to dig real deep, but we're just not there yet. It's just a process. But I don't want to lose any savings helps. So I would like to see us, and especially the problem I've had with our other vendor, that, um, for example, to expand on a little bit more at the DPW was, we had a vendor that would show up and do our burglar and fire inspections. We'd ask them for a report, we'd get nothing. We'd ask them for a document, we'd get nothing. So after a series of issues, he has to go, we have to put this in place to keep us moving. At least I feel better with what we have now than what we had. Thank you. You're welcome. Any further comments from the board? Comments from the public on the security system modernization and updates. Motion by Clerk Barry, support by Trustee Domink. Clerk Barry, please call the roll. Clerk Barry, aye. Trustee Domink. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Supervisor Acrobat. Aye. The motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. 8J. Request from the Director of Public Safety to award the Fire Station Number no. 1 renovation project to DNS Contractors Inc. with a total cost not exceeded not to exceed one million nine hundred twelve thousand five hundred and four dollars from General Ledger Number no. Two O Five Dash Three Four Zero Dash Nine Seven Zero. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Motion by Treasurer Lafada. Support. Support by Trustee Joseph. Yes. Sorry, Joe, yes. I think this is going to be a bit of a team with Director Kirsten and uh, Director Sonnenberg. Are you working on your IT over there? Yeah, sorry. I just wanted to get up. Uh, I want to walk you through. Um, I have a PowerPoint presentation that I want to walk through, so if you could just give me a second. Sorry. So I'm going to take a little bit of time and kind of explain where we were, where we are, and where we're going with this project to give kind of everybody a little bit more background. So when we obviously ask for this request. So first, um, sorry, probably going to have technical problems now. If you need to, you can run, run it right from there. I do believe there's a microphone. Let's see if that works. So this, this is our original, obviously, the current fire station one. This building was originally built um, for on all staff. As you know, we discussed before that we have firemen sleeping in the entryway and various locations. Mr. Steinberg, make sure, um, turn on your mic. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just going to explain, uh, give you a quick overview of the project, and then um, our public safety director and also our architect, Joe Nowitzki, is here if you've got any questions later on in the presentation. So, geez, sorry. So this right here just shows a basic breakdown. Um, we, when we first started, we put together an architectural RFP for design and engineering. That was the first stage. Um, just basically design some concepts and come up with some architectural drawings. This is just a quick snapshot of when we went out for public bid, these are the people that bid on the project. 
and you can see that um, the highlighted one is the contractor that we selected. He was the original architect for the building. He did a great job. It's one of our better buildings. It's been in, it's withstand the test of time. It looks fantastic. So he wasn't the cheapest, but we decided to select him and we moved forward. So originally when we started, we went through several different concepts. We started, um, you can see that the building up there represents the existing building, just a line drawing. This lower building was one of the first concepts. So you can see that when we first started off, the idea was to add two additional apparatus bays that were higher that they could service the engines and do repairs in because these doors were too low. They couldn't open up the cab of a truck. These new doors would give them that ability. And then we also talked about the possibility of doing a training tower. So we went big pie in the sky and we thought, let's see what this cost. So in the process, while we were doing the design, we also did some cost analysis and we brought um, some people in and we did, did some cost models to see if it was really feasible to put the training tower. Well, after we did some cost analysis, we realized we enhanced the design, sorry. We enhanced the design and um, we came up with this. So what this represents is the design we currently are at today. This shows the proposed upstairs. We've discussed this briefly before that this was really the most economical way to add on the square footage we need. So basically what we're doing is we're going over the existing living space and then over one of the bays. So this is all new living space for the firemen, which we'll get into more detail later. These are the two new apparatus bays and the storage unit. You can see the difference between the old building and the new building. This next shot basically shows you um, the areas that are being remodeled. Once again, like I talked about, this is the existing floor plan. This is the new living space. I'll show you a little bit more detailed pictures later. These are the two new apparatus bays that we're adding and the storage. This is the architectural drawing for the inside. It's a little too detailed, so I'm gonna show you a little cleaner so you can kind of understand what's going on. But there's a lot of details that went into this space. We've met countless times, went over, made changes. It's a lot different from the original design. The idea of going over the bay is the same, but the interior has changed. So this is a little bit just simplified so you can understand it. So we got a workout area, an office, another office, some utility furnace room, storage, and then you move over here, we have a kitchen, a day room, and you'll notice the sets of stairs. These two sets of stairs here and here, the lower ones, are um, because the apparatus bay floor is a little bit higher than the actual lower living space. So you have a small set of stairs to get up so we could still utilize that square footage but we had to make an effort to tr for the transition. This set of stairs is the stairs that takes you downstairs. You got a men's and a women's locker room. Um, we incorporated new lockers for the firemen, a storage area, and then this is the sleeping area. You got one bedroom and then several open areas with beds that will be placed in these areas. So that's a pretty simple rundown of the space. You got several windows on the outside all the way around, so there's plenty of natural light. And then this door just represents attic space, so you can get into here if you had to do any um, maintenance or repairs. So from that point, once we had a final set of drawings, we went out for an RFP. We designed um, or we developed the final set of bid documents. We posted the RFP on June 7th. June 18th, we had a contractor site walkthrough. June 21st, the contractor submitted all their questions that they had in regards to the plan and the walkthrough. Um, then on June 25th, just recently, we sent our responses out to answer any of those questions they might have. And then July 11th, we had our public bid opening. And you can see here, during our site walk, we had, uh, I would, it was 11 contractors that walked through the building that were interested in the project. But we wound up only receiving four bids. And as you can see, two of the bids were extremely close. We had DNS contractors and Burnco. They were not far apart at all. The other two were a little bit higher, so you can see that there. So that, from there, um, from July 11th to July 17th, we, uh, we did bid reviews and we went through the bids. We called a lot of the contractors. Um, all their, we checked on all their information on the bid documents. We also called some of their references, kind of went through all that. And then on the 17th, we did contractor interviews. We narrowed it down, obviously, to the two closest general contractors, Burnco and DNS. We have a team all along pretty much that has been working on this project. So we assembled and we met with those two contractors. We asked them a series of questions and we went through 
different scenarios. And basically, at the end of the day, even though DNS was at the time a little bit higher on price, they showed that their schedule, their timeline, and they pointed out numerous project concerns. For example, they used an example of the brick that we had in the fire station. They were concerned with the lead time, so they brought that to our attention. And we had a lengthy discussion about it. When we asked the other contractor the same question, they didn't see any issues, and their timeline was a little bit longer. Also, DNS had a really good handle on the construction. There's certain intricacies when you're adding on to that space, the way the new construction sits on the old construction, and they went into great detail about that. So we all we agreed wholeheartedly that DNS was the was our best contractor at the time. They also provided, in addition to their original bid, they provided um, an efficiency. If you were to group the two, we basically had it in two separate sections, and if they we put those sections together and made it one, we would save quite a bit of money. That's reflected in our final ask. That's why our final ask is a little bit cheaper than original. So this kind of just is a quick breakdown and summary. So basically you have the design and engineering phase, which is up here. That's the contract that we already signed with uh, Joe Novisky and his firm. We have the preliminary cost estimate. That's when we were determined whether we were going to put the, uh, we got some hard numbers, whether we were going to put the train tower up or not. And then this is the construction and GC cost. You can see it's a little bit cheaper. That reflects his savings if we combine the two phases into one, which we did. Also, we recommend a 10% contingency. So what I'm here asking for today are these two numbers here, basically to get the building started and a 10% contingency. This line item down here is basically shows the risk. And what I mean by risk is not all risk. A lot of this is, I'm a big fan of everything that's bolted to the building gets, con gets included in construction costs. In other words, if there's security, access, furniture, anything that's going in that building should be shown as a line item. So Brad did a really good um, and went through and got prices on a lot of stuff when we started forming a budget for those costs. I know it's a big number, but it's also that number also reflects about $50,000 just in case that piece of property that's owned by Stanley Tool becomes an issue. And um, we're kind of going back and forth right now whether they're going to we're going to donate it or there's going to be a cost involved. So once we know that for sure, that number is covered in this cost here. So that brings our total project cost to this. Total construction building project cost is this. But right now, we're just asking for the amount that showed in your packet. Thank you. You are. Yeah, right. I'm sorry. Right, I'm going to open up for questions because I got we got to this point. I figured there'd be a series of questions. Would you like to finish your presentation and then move on to questions? Or are you done with your presentation? Um, we're, we're good. Okay, let's open up to questions. Mr. Can, I would uh, like to ask the motion maker. Um, thank you. I'd like to ask the motion maker to uh, friendly amendment to include the entirety of the project. I, I really don't like the, um, like, let, if we're going to approve it, let's, let's, we know the cost, and I'd like to see the total project approved and discussed as, a, as an entire package, because you're certainly not going to approve 1.9 million and then say, well, we, we, we can't finish the project because we don't have, you know, the 300,000 to complete it. So it's an entire project, and I think it should be debated on the entirety. So I would ask the motion maker to consider uh, the entirety of the project. Um, I have no problem um, resending my original motion and uh, motion to include the entire amount. Is there continued support? Trustee yes. Joseph? Okay. Just to make sure that I'm clear, the, the, the amended motion is to approve the request from the Director of Public Safety to award the fire station number one renovation project to DNS contractors for a total cost not to exceed uh, 2,312,000. Yeah, but, 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 so, can, but some of those, can, a lot of those costs aren't going to come through DNS. So let's, let's add the 300, or to, for, hold on one second, for $1,912,504 plus. plus a 10% contingency along with $300,000 allowance for security access and furnishings. 
Well, that that, that I box. I made a mistake on that. that. Doesn't the one one seven oh, three eight plus the one seven three equals one nine? You can you can go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, the, the, the contract with DNS is going to be for $1,912,504. One Correct. Correct. The, ads on, the ad would be a 10% <coughs> contingency and $300,000 for, um, for furnishings. The, the top two items are already appropriated. And yeah, that's, I, I, the, the highlight. 1.9, 1.9 1. 1. 1. million, 1.912 is the, is the construction cost with the contingency. Correct. The, the ad, the and then there's an additional 300,000. Okay. So the total would be 2.2, dollars $2, is the total, the total amount. If, if you're adding the 10% and the 300K. Is that the number you have, Paul? Um, I think that Brad's got the number and Dan's got it. I... Let me restate the motion again, if I can. Okay. Um, amended motion to approve the request from the Director of Public Safety to award Fire Station Number One renovation project to DNS contractors for one one million seven hundred thirty-eight thousand six hundred forty dollars plus. $173,864, which is a 10% contingency to that contract. In addition, $300,000 for security access and furnishings. Is that sound? For, yeah, continuous. Okay. Okay, so it's a, that, that's your motion. Correct. Continued support. Okay. Discussion. Questions on the presentation? Can I? Uh... Dan Paul. Treasurer Lafada. Uh, before we move forward, uh, I, I know that's a big number, but when we started out originally and we looked at the original concepts, the, there was a concept of building out instead of up, and that concept would have cost the township about another four to five hundred thousand um, dollars. When we got Joe to do the design for us, uh, he did soil samples, load-bearing load tests, and everything else, and uh, thought it was very feasible to move up, which uh, didn't require extra footings. It didn't encroach on the uh, uh, space, parking space in the back. Uh, saved a lot of money because everything was already in place to go up as far as plumbing and, and that. So everybody's looking at a big number, but it, it could have been four or five hundred thousand dollars more if we wound up building out instead of up so I, I just think we should note that and um, I don't know how many people have gone through the fire station but that fire station was never meant for full-time firemen to, to sleep uh, you know and, and it, it, it needs to be it needs to be updated the other thing that should be mentioned is everything in that building is going to be replaced the HVAC system the water heaters the generator, everything needs to, in other words, it's going to need to be replaced anyway. So based on this update, everything's going to be new. It'll be maintenance free for years to come. Uh, if we don't do this, we're going to start putting money into a building that's archaic. Thank you. Further comments from the board? Trust or Clickberry. Thank you. So once all of the renovations are done, first off, I think great job coming in on the price because I remember when we had a discussion about this particular item, we were looking at somewhere between 2.5 and 3.1 million dollars if I'm remembering correctly. So this number, uh, total number is coming in below that and from what I've seen in the past, um, especially with Josh, that it tends to be your number, your total real cost actually end up coming in less than that and I think Director Kirsten's had the same experience. Um, I know that you guys have been very prudent um, in that um, much of uh, the projects that I have seen you do uh, actually become less than that. So I think great job on getting a very high quality um, product here, project, um, at the price you did. The question that I have is uh, how many serviceable years do we expect to get out of this facility uh, without any major anything more than standard maintenance, any other major um, renovations? How many years of service do we expect to get out of this facility? When we, you know, as we 
Well, I, I can speak to the facility side. Obviously, like Mr. Uh, Treasurer Lafada touched on it, it is a good time to do the renovation because the building was built in the early 90s and it's a lot of the equipment, most all of it, is at the end of its remaining useful life. So you're pulling out things that are, you know, that have been there since the early 90s. So the same systems you put in from a building standpoint, we are spending a little bit more money on this building, I'll, I'll be honest, but you, as you can see from the outside, it's all brick, all metal roof, all the features that we're putting in this building are meant to stand the test of time. The roof's still in pretty good shape, but unfortunately we gotta do this remodel, we're gonna remove sections of that, but we're putting the same roof back on, so the outside shell in the building will be intact for a long while, and I believe Director Kirsten can speak to the use of the building, which I think is the exact reason why we're doing this. It worked up until then, and now it's, with the size and the way the township is growing, obviously I think this will, this will put us in good use long into the future. Like any building, everything you put into a building only has you know, a 20 year life on average. I mean, we're gonna start doing repairs, but I think that this puts us in a lot better position. Right now, we need it more than ever because we're just, we're in a bad spot. Any further comments from the board? <coughs> This is our first substantial facility upgrade in quite some time. Lots of work went into this. I am gonna reread the amended motion uh, back and this will be the one that uh, I wanna make sure gets put to the record as I understand it, Treasurer Lafada. Motion by Treasurer Lafada, support by Trustee Joseph to approve the request from the Director of Public Safety to award the fire station number one renovation project to DNS contractors for a cost of $1,738,000, $1,738,640, and a $173,864 contingency, along with $300,000 for security access, IT, property purchase, and furnishings. Clerk Barry, please call the roll. Oh, I'm sorry. You better let Joe. Public yeah. comment. Mr. Miller, this is, this is the item. Two million dollars? I don't have that much. I appreciate the service that we get from our fire department, but I thought I came down here in the last year sometime and you guys had closed the fire station. Now to spend two million bucks on a fire station, when I got one, is it still closed? I kind of wonder. I'm kind of say, if I got a fire station closed right now, and I'm going to spend two million bucks to re Mr. Miller, make sure address the address your comments toward the board. Okay, you want me to talk straight to you, or anyone up here? Okay, two million dollars to build on to a fire station that's already there and doing the service and you just closed one is it still closed fire if the fire the fire station jefferson is yeah. still closed that is correct object that's, that's built in it nice. thank you I, I just object really thank you for your comments and, I'm, and I, I turned 88 on saturday so i don't want one of your jobs I understand. And I don't want to start picking it out here on the street with a sign, throw them all out, with, and handing out two million dollar. Here's a check for two million bucks. I thank you for your services. I thank these guys here for doing the work. I tolerated where a guy put some junk up there we couldn't read, and now he's gone. Thank you, sir. I appreciate all the service. I love these people to build, work in these buildings in their township. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Motion by Trust, Treasurer Lafada, support by Trustee Tom Joseph. Down. Clerk Barry, please. Mr. Supervisor, before you call the roll, um, one of the points that Mr. Miller made I would like to address, and that is, uh, well, two of them, uh, because what he says is probably something that a lot of residents are thinking, and that is, um, I don't want to spend two million bucks and the answer to that is you've already spent it. That money is currently in the, uh, the uh, uh, fund that deals with uh, equipment and property. So you're not spending two million, you've already spent it. It's in the bank, you've already been, you've already been taxed, 
and there's no, there's no tax increase associated with the $2 million. Two, um, with regard to whether or not it's more effective to put the money into the closed station, you wouldn't put $2 million into something that was a complete waste. So when we did the assessment on the building uh, on Jefferson, um, we, we were really in a position to completely tear down and build new. Uh, putting money into that fire station was not prudent. The incorporation of the needs of the township is something that the public safety director, along with uh, our fire chief, and then all of the uh, other parties, our engineer, our planning department, and the collective will of the board, is that this meets the operational needs of the township in the most economical way. And going back to Chief Charbonneau's original plans, which involved an expansion for that station, um, the cost was considerably higher, as Clerk Berry pointed out. It was through the process where we built up and took advantage of existing footprint by adding some height that we were able to save a half million dollars. And since the station has closed, the thorough monitoring of response times, uh, station one with additional base for apparatus adequately addressed the township's needs. So being able to stage our equipment in that location actually makes more sense even if we didn't have a station that was causing harm to our firefighters over on Jefferson. This meets the training needs, it meets the operational needs, it meets the budget needs, and it's already in the bank. This isn't a tax increase. This is a proper utilization of existing revenue that's been put away over the course of decades, really. So this is an appropriate expenditure, and uh, congratulations to the team for putting this together in the way that you did under the pr initial proposed budget. Thank you, Trustee Joseph. I do thank you for uh, pointing that out. We did hash this out when throughout the last couple of years, which was nice, but just to reiterate, a, a lot of uh, thought went into our existing facilities, the condition they're in, and their location for um, the future of our community. And throughout that process, this fire station was in desperate need of an up upgrade, has been for several decades, because um, it's not equipped to run the, the, uh, the personnel that we have. So a lot of deliberation on this board to close the station on Jefferson, which we, unify, we, we stand behind. However, after making that assumption, uh, uh, that decision, or in concert with that decision, this facility needed an upgrade for our community. And this investment, although a very large number, a new facility um, would be double or triple this investment. We hashed this out over and over again, and I appreciate you, Trustee Joseph, for, for pointing that out because there, someone might just get a snapshot in time with this item. Any further comments from the board? Motion by Treasurer Lafada, support by Trustee Joseph. Clerk Berry, please call the roll. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. Aye. Clerk Berry, aye. Motion passes. Item eight. K, request approval to pay the Civic Plus annual website maintenance invoice in the amount of $4,200. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Trustee Joseph. Second. Support by Clerk Barry. Any discussion? Clerk Barry, this or your comments. Pretty straightforward. Yep. Any comments from the board? Any discussion from the public? Motion by Trustee Joseph, support by Clerk Berry, to approve the request to pay Civic Plus annual website maintenance invoice in the amount of $4,200. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by saying nay. Motion prevails. Item 8L, approval of precinct polling locations and adoption of resolution 2019-24 as recommended by the Chesterfield Township Election Commission. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Trustee Domingue. Support. Support by Clerk Berry, discussion. Comments from the public. Motion by Trustee Domingue, support by Clerk Berry to, to approve precinct polling locations and adopt resolution 2019-24 as recommended by the Chesterfield Township Election Commission. All those in favor, excuse me, oh, resolution. Yeah, Clerk Berry, please call the roll. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Clerk Berry, aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. Aye. Motion prevails. 
Item 8M, approval request to increase precinct election worker wages and adopt resolution 2019-25. Do I have a motion? Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to make a motion to approve and adopt resolution number 2019-25. Motion by Clerk Barry. Support. Support by Trustee Anderson. Discussion. Clerk Barry. Uh, Mr. Supervisor, uh, just want to answer any questions that uh, the board may have. Um, this issue is something that all clerks are dealing with. Um, in order to um, be able to recruit uh, enough um, uh, election workers um, who are capable of keeping up with the uh, recent technological integrations from the state, as well as to accommodate um, just the increase in um, uh, wages that are uh, to be competitive. Um, we are asking to make a change to our um, election inspector uh, wage scale. Uh, this issue was discussed um, at length by the election commission as well, um, and uh, there was unanimous support for it uh, to go to the board. Uh, we did not put that in the um, in the um, particular agenda item, um, but um, Trustee Anderson, myself, and Trustee Vosberg serve on the um, election. Uh, commission, although Trustee Vosberg isn't here, um, I know Trustee Anderson can also um, speak to the conversation that we had about it. Um, once we make these changes, it will make us competitive with the surrounding communities um, that are similarly situated um, and allow us to um, better um, accommodate the needs of uh, the modern day um, elections. Any questions for Clerk Barry? Any comments from the public? Motion by Clerk Barry, support by Trustee Anderson. Clerk Barry, Clerk Barry, please call the roll. Clerk Barry, aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Domingo. Aye. Treasurer LaFada. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. Aye. Motion prevails. There are no addendum tonight. And item number 10 is public comment. Please limit your comments to five minutes and state your name for the record. Good evening. My name is uh, Jeff Stankavage. I live at 49360 Bay Lane. Um, last week, I addressed in the meeting, the board meeting, about um, um, Airbnbs or rental properties, basically commercializing residential areas, making them commercial hotels, motels. And my question to you guys is, is has there been any progress? Have we moved forward with anything? Has anything been said, drafted up, done? That's all. I'm just curious. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments from the public? Somebody removed the sign in. I just signed the old piece of paper anyway. I, I'm trying to, to say that I don't want to spend two million bucks to build, add on to a fire station when I've got one that's closed. Now, I hope that you'll forgive me if, if I'm a tight wad because I go around turning the lights off that my wife leaves on in my house and I try to save electricity. Well, when I turn the light off and I say, well, I save that and I can use it to air condition later or help somebody else. So if I am a tight wad, it's because I was born that way. But when you grow up in a house that don't have electricity and you got a house that's on the books for a couple hundred thousand dollars and you're 88 years old and you're turning the lights out to save your own electricity bill with a pretty good retirement situation, you can understand. So I respect all you guys and if, if I do decide to hit the streets, I'll let you know. At least I had the common courtesy to go see the chief of police when he had something on the agenda going to spend $400,000 at a police station one time. I think he'll agree that I did go down there. Right, chief? Yes, sir. Oop, copy, 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 Mr. Thank Miller, Mr. Service, Miller, keep too. your comments toward the board. Thank, thank, you. thank you, sir. Thank you. Gentlemen. Thank you. Any further comments? Uh, 
Hi, I'm Louise off of uh, Henning Street. What's going on with that sewer system over there behind the houses off of Henning's and uh, eastbound 94? It, I don't know if that's a sewer system or whatever. The other day I was walking over the bridge and it looks like it's been taken out of the ground over there. What's the deal? Louise, if you could give your information to the gentleman right behind you, that is a um, Macomb is County. It? it is a Macomb County system, and they will be able to get you answers what's, what's going down on the road. Oh, don't, don't, no, uh, well, when, when you're done with your comments, I'm sorry, Louise, when, you, when you're done with your comments. Um, <laughs> oh, if you okay. Could, right. yep. <laughs> Thank you. Any further comments from the public? Let's bring it up to the board. Trustee Anderson. Thank you, sir. First uh, thing, next uh, next Tuesday, August the 13th at 6 p.m. over at the Historical Society building, they'll be having their potluck dinner. Uh, they'll be supplying the main, uh, main plate, a meat plate. Uh, ask you if you do want to attend to bring a plate to uh, pass around again at 6 p.m. over at the Historical Society. Uh, there is uh, also there is a uh, the township there is a auto visual committee uh, that's been meeting looking at upgrading um, the way our meetings are recorded documented and equipment involved you might have noticed uh, these things are on loan today they're very interesting uh, very impressed with them if we very impressed with them uh, there's also a building speaker you can notice how probably take one of these walk throughout the compound here and uh, we'd pick pick it up through uh, the system again these are just alone they were presented during one of the uh, by one of the vendors kind enough to let us use them for the night um, among other things that that committee is looking at is uh, what mr. Miller what you which you pointed out um, anytime there's a presentation on a blank wall um, we're squinting we're all sitting there squinting and if you're watching it on channel 6 or on K or on a online it's a terrible presentation one of the things entertaining is that they will upgrade the, that capability for those presentations so they will be visible uh, to all and uh, finally uh, mr. Miller you did talk on and in, in about the cost of these renovations to this fire station I believe we are a majority of us are fiscally conservative um, don't believe in urinating cash down a hole with little or no return uh, it is a public's money we're trying to maintain it, make it last. Um, when a sad move, or when a sad w uh, district was uh, created, there was, I believe, there was equipment money in the fire equipment fund that would probably cover this. So, again, as Mr. Joseph pointed out, it's not an additional cost; it's upgrading a facility that was built at a time in which it was a part-time uh, fire department, you know, uh, really wasn't designed for um, the size of the community or uh, marshalling people for uh, extended shifts. Uh, this will address that, and it will as, um, as far as our firefighters and that covering the area. So again, it's not, it, it's not, a, um, not a new expense. It, it's new expenditure upgrading a facility, but it's not something that's we have to worry about additional millage or anything to that um, of that nature again thank you trustee joseph and this green light this is oof. the um comments trustee anderson made regarding the station um prior to the public safety special assessment district which now incorporates the two previous fire millages which were the equipment fund and the um, uh, operational fund in addition to the uh, police department uh, special assessment district all were combined and the public safety but those funds remained and the monies uh, to make this improvement have been in the township coffers for years uh, they are being utilized exactly the way they were uh, mandated to be used by the voters when the special assessment district and the millages were created um, this has uh, been uh, discussed for years, going back to even Chief uh, Charbonneau talking about modifications that he wanted. And uh, over the course of many number of years, all the different needs have been brought to the attention of the board, including the training uh, facility and the portion that allows our firefighters to do training inside the township without having to leave to go to an alternative site. 
So this renovation captures all of that, and as we discussed tonight, actually comes in uh, significantly less, uh, 20 to 25 percent less than some of the original projections, which is uh, quite a feat. So uh, proud of the public safety team, uh, our firefighters, our fire chief, and of course Director Kirsten for uh, putting it all together and working with our engineers and our planning and um, getting this um, you know project finally uh, approved in total. So I th thank you for that. Um, the other thing quickly was a um, couple of residents uh, continue to have um, um, problems with their um, trash pickup, specifically to dealing with uh, broken cans. So um, I'd like to forward a couple um, on to your office, Mr. Supervisor, and also to uh, Mr. Munum. Uh, but uh, individual, uh, Mr. Uh, Smoy sent me some pictures today of uh, the second can that he's replaced. And it is one of those wheeled uh, carts. He doesn't lease. He bought a can. Uh, and it's just the, um, the wheels are just blown off the thing. Also received some video from a resident whose um, non-GFL can uh, was sort of connected to the back of the truck. Uh, the worker pushes the can into the truck and takes off can and all. No, um, no emptying the can and putting it back in the curb. Just can is gone and it was all captured on her security video. Uh, so um, we, we really need to stay on top of these. I want to make sure that all of our uh, points of contact are communicating so residents are reaching out to board members, and I want to get that to you, um, Mr. Supervisor, in your office. I know we've had some uh, recent uh, changes in terms of the response, and that's good, so I want to put them on that. And um, thank the board members for some uh, very spirited discussions tonight. It's not often we cover, uh, you know, so many topics and so many uh, innovative things uh, with the uh, addition of our new planner. Um, just really tickled with the work that's being done over there. And um, to finally, uh, to, to get the, fu the uh, final approval here on the uh, Fire Station 1 renovation project. Uh, big night in the township, and um, I, I feel very good about the uh, work we done collab we we've done tonight collaboratively. So uh, thank you to uh, all of our board members. Trustee Domingo. From our uh, leisure services director now, as it's called, the two weeks of summer con concerts remain. Bring the family out to Brandenburg Park on Thursday nights. This Thursday from 7 to 9 will be Jukebox Junkies. And then on August 8 will be the ultimate 80s band, uh, $5 per car. And the kids can be entertained with Game Splash Park. Um, also, the Parks and Rec is accepting registration for fall t-ball and pitching machines. It's a three-practice, six-game season beginning September 24th for kids ages 5 to 9. Registration is accepted through September 1st. Uh, contact the uh, Parks and Rec at ChesterfieldParksTownship.org. Um, the Fall Parks and Rec's catalog of activities will be mailed to residents the week of August 12th. Check your mailbox and sign up for your fall favorites beginning on August 16th. Youth Basketball Leagues, Halloween Happenings, Adult Fitness, Youth Trips, and much more be part of the community. Also, uh, I'd like to extend my condolences to the Pollard family. Mr. Jim Pollard, a longtime supervisor from back in the, I believe, 70s, 80s, uh, and the 90s, a good friend of my family, who worked with my father. Mr. Anderson will remember him back from his days, uh, passed away this week. So I'd like to send my condolences out to the Pollard family. In fact, Jim Pollard was the one instrumental in getting this building built back in the day. So uh, my condolences uh, to the Pollard family and the loss of their father and grandfather. Thank you. Treasurer Lafada. Uh, I think in lieu of uh, the lateness of the night, I'll uh, abstain and communicate my comments in a different manner. Thank you. Clerk Barry. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Just uh, something very quickly. Um, the clerk's department mailed out to all registered voters who were not on the permanent absentee voter list um, a notice uh, alerting <coughs> them to uh, their options uh, 
now for voting absentee with no reason. Um, this will give people the flexibility to vote at, from home on their own time um, and uh, without giving a reason uh, under the previous um, legislation. Uh, we also let them know some of the other changes that affected them um, as it relates to Proposal 3 from 2016. And as a result of that mailing, um, we have added an additional 2,972 voters uh, to the permanent absentee voter list. And what that means for all registered voters who come to vote at the polls is that there are now fewer people at the polls, which means that we will be able to get you in and out of the polling location in a more expeditious manner uh, and hopefully in enhance your voting experience by if you go to the polls, you will see shorter lines and uh, a faster uh, time to vote. And if you pr choose not to go to the polls, we will now assist you in um, processing an absentee ballot um, and being able to vote from home on your own time. So um, two of those enhanced services that we are offering to our registered voters. Uh, there are still more coming in, and we hope to eclipse that number. We were hoping to convert uh, approximately 5% of our current non-permanent uh, absentee voter list voters, registered voters, uh, to become permanent AVs, and we've actually doubled that number. So we're very happy with that. Uh, please contact the clerk's office if you received that notification and perhaps you misplaced it and you would still like to be on the permanent absentee voter list. We can assist you with that, particularly if you are in the Anchor Bay School District and know that you have an election that is coming up this November. Um, please contact the clerk's office and we would be happy to assist you with that. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 12 is closed session. We have two items on today's closed session. 12A, to consider the purchase of real property pursuant to Section 8D of the Michigan Open Meetings Act. And item 12B, discussion regarding strategy and negotiation sessions pursuant to Section 8C of the Open Meetings Act. Do I have a motion to enter closed session? Motion to go into closed session. Motion by Trustee Demink. <coughs> Or by Trustee Anderson. Clerk Berry, please call the roll. Trustee Domingo. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Treasurer LaFada. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. Aye. Clerk Berry, aye. Motion to re-enter open session. Motion to go on session. Motion by Trustee Domingo. Support. Support by Clerk Berry to re-enter open session. Clerk Berry, please call we the roll. We are back in open session, Mr. Duchesne. Well, I just Trustee Domingo. Aye. Every tenant. Clerk Berry, aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Treasurer LaFada. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. Aye. We are back in closed session at we 10. Open. We are back in open session at 10 15 p.m. Item number 13 is the adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion so to adjourn. Uh, motion Jeez. to adjourn by Trustee Domingue, supported Third. by Trustee Anderson. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by saying nay. We are adjourned at 10 16 p.m.